two bitter rivals. One great classic. Tennessee State and Jackson State. The 2007 edition of the Southern Heritage Classic. It's all about the game. From the Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee, Sports South presents the 18th annual Southern Heritage Classic as the Tigers from Tennessee State University take on the Tigers from Jackson State University. Good evening, great to have you with us for the Southern Heritage Classic. I'm Tom Wormy. This will be the 14th year in a row that Tennessee State and Jackson State will do battle in the Southern Heritage Classic. And the last two games truly have been classic, right down to the wire, into overtime with Tennessee State winning both of those ball games. Time to bring in my broadcast partner, Rod Smith, an NFL veteran and a member of the 1988 National Championship team from Notre Dame. And Rod, even though it's early in the season, this is a big game for both programs who desperately need a win after losing the openers last week. Well, the last thing you want to do is start your season in 0-2, but the intensity doesn't just take place on the field in between the chalk lines. It spreads up into the stands through the alumni. John Merritt built this JSU program years ago in the 60s into a national power. He decides to leave and goes to where? Tennessee State University. Bang, instant rivalry. As for Tennessee State, they'll look to their quarterback, the junior Antonio Hefter. Three interceptions last week, but we know he can get the job done. Yeah, Antonio is unquestionably the leader of this team, let alone the offense. Unfortunately, he's got a grossly swollen ring finger on his throwing hand, caused him to be a little inaccurate last week. He's had a week to heal up. Hopefully the hand feels good when you see the, the normal Antonio who moves the football. And for Jackson State, Trey Rutland will get the start at quarterback, and they'll also get back another weapon. Eric Haw, their top running back, missed last week because of a left ankle injury. You know, I'm very excited to see Eric Haw play. He plays a lot bigger than his 215 frame. He is a physical, aggressive, in-your-face type runner, a transfer from Ohio State who sets the tempo for that entire offense. And Rod, in the last three games, these two teams have been separated by just eight points. We're getting set for the 18th annual Southern Heritage Classic from the Liberty Bowl. Tennessee State and Jackson State. The Tigers and the Tigers set to kick it off. Right after this, it's next on Sports South. The Southern Heritage Classic on Sports South is being brought to you by Dodge, Grab Life, Allstate, proud sponsors of the Allstate Sugar Bowl and the Allstate BCS National Championship, Tyson, proud sponsor of the Southern Heritage Classic, AutoZone, get in the zone, AutoZone, FedEx, Go Air, Go Ground, Go Football, and by the Ford F-150. Welcome back to the Liberty Bowl for the Southern Heritage Classic, Tennessee State against Jackson State. And for more on the history of this rivalry between these two proud programs, we go down to James Verrett. Rather than calling it the Southern Heritage Classic, you could call it the Big Blue War, simply because Jackson State and Tennessee State, all the way back in 1949, they haven't liked each other. They're talking to Tennessee State coach James Webster. He compares it to gladiators in ancient Rome. If you lose, it's just like dying. Talking to the FCA representative for Jackson State, Lester Walls, he said that it's a God sign that it's war time for Jackson State, and it's time for them to go out and play ball in the name of the Lord. So regardless of who you're pulling for, they'll leave it all out on the field and expect to see a good ball game. Back to you guys upstairs. Thank you, James. So the Liberty Bowl turns into the Roman Coliseum tonight for this great game and this great rivalry between these two historically traditional schools here contesting this game tonight. Time for the keys to the game. We uh, go to Rod and find out exactly where we're going with this game tonight, Rod. Well, if you take a, you take a look at the keys of the game in, in TSU, what they need to do on offense is get the ball to their stud. That would be Javarius Williams. Before this year is out, he's going to be the all-time rushing leader at his school. Feed the stud, take pressure off the seven new starters you have on offense, and your quarterback has got a bum hand. Defensively, TSU's got to show some mental toughness. They got hit with the big play last week in the second half. What did they do? They folded their tent. They reacted poorly, panicked, and that game was over. That defense has got to play well under pressure. 
JSU. They've got to find an identity on offense. Our comedy says that, hey, our quarterback led the league in passing efficiency. We got five offensive starters back on, on the old line. You think you'd be a good passing team, right? Wrong. Absolutely <laughs> not. They were awful as we got dismantled. They got to decide if they're going to pass it or if they want to run it. On defense, they got to stop the run. They were outgained by 300 yards on the ground. I don't care what you call on offense. If you allow somebody to come into your stadium and hold the ball for 38 minutes and run 83 plays, you have no shot to win. Got to get the run stopped. And those are the Ford keys to the game with Rod Smith as we get set that is Rick Kamaji his record so far 0-1 this season lost to Delta State last week the 42nd meeting between the two teams Jackson State leads 21 to 18 with two ties and Tennessee State has won the last four meetings between these two teams and there's the Tennessee State head coach James Webster in his third season 8 and 15 overall and he is dead serious about today's game. He wants a win desperately for his ball club. Yeah, James Webster uh, came to TSU after recruiting this state for a number of years for uh, Bunning at North Carolina. He knows every high school coach in this state. He's recruited fantastic, and this program is on the rise. Rick Kamaji is in his second year at Jackson State. Kamaji had a 12-0 record in 2000 while at Tuskegee, but now he steps it up in competition here. Yeah, Rick Kamaji knows what he's doing. If you look at him over the course of his career, this guy wins two out of every three games he's coached, and he's been in this game for about 25 years. So he's going to get this uh, JSU program where it needs to be. They're six and he's six and six overall at this university. But if you give him 10, 15 years, he's going to have a record somewhere around 135. He's a very, very good football coach. Rick Kamaji overall 114 wins, just 56 losses in 16 years as a head coach. We are just about set to get this one started from the Liberty Bowl. Jackson State will be in the dark blue uniforms. Tennessee State with the white jerseys and blue pants. Last year's game was an overtime victory, 31 to 30 for Tennessee State as they converted on a two-point conversion to win the game in overtime. That was the second year in a row they won it in OT. The ball is in the air, and we are underway at the Southern Heritage Classic. And Tennessee State will take it at its own 35, and that's where it'll start, first and 10. That is number 16, Antonio Hefter, the starting quarterback for Tennessee State last year, throwing for over 1,600 yards. This year, 15 of 30 in his first game, Rod. Yeah, and Coach Webster said that he has never seen Antonio play as poorly as he did last week. Obviously, a large part of that is having a, a almost near broken finger on your throwing hand. But more than that, he's got to do a good job of getting his team in the right play talking about the run game, and also knowing when, even if your hand is hurt, to go ahead and shut it down and don't make the bad pass and get it picked off. Tennessee State will start with a shotgun. The quick handoff to Ronald Evans. And Evans goes out of bounds. And he picks up the first down of the very first play from scrimmage out towards midfield. Yeah, James Webster wants to give this quarterback a chance to, to have a nice smooth start after a rough outing last week. So you get the ball in, into your speedster's hand, get him on the perimeter. The defensive end from Jackson State is playing too close to the line of scrimmage. You hook him, bang, first down. That's number 12, Ronald Evans, 5'9", 185-pound junior, getting a first down on the very first play of the ball game, up to the 49 for Tennessee State, first and 10. Again from the shotgun. Hefner has to get creative. He gets back to midfield. May have picked up one on the play. Here is the starting offense for Tennessee State along the offensive line. Cecil Newton, the uh, center, being the best player in that group right there. He's a uh, preseason all-conference pick. The backs and receivers, and Chris Johnson, the leading receiver, had three catches last week, 89 yards and a touchdown. So call it second and nine for Tennessee State. Hefner yet to test the throwing hand. Third play of the drive. He'll hand it off. That is Terrence Wright. And Terrence Wright is forced back by a host of dark blue jerseys who saw it from the start. Take a look at the defensive unit. 
for Jackson State University. And Daniel Brooks, he moved from linebacker to defensive end and had one sack last week, had 60 tackles last season. Now Daniel Brooks is the best player they have on that defense. The transfer in from Mississippi State's been a good player since he got there. The secondary. Led by Dominique Johnson, who had an interception last week in the loss to Alabama AM, and 49-23 in the John Merritt Classic. Now Hector wants to go up top, and it's just a bit too long for his receiver, who definitely wanted a penalty there. He was looking for Brandon Belvin, number 83. Yeah, to go back real quick, you take a, a look at uh, Dominique Johnson, number six, the left cornerback for, uh, for Jackson State. And, you know, he was a starter at Missouri before he transferred into this program. So he's a, a cut above the rest of the guys on the field here from an athletic perspective. He's a little faster and a little bigger than most guys who play corner in this league. Taylor Cisneros will punt it away for Tennessee State. Loses the handle. Cisneros picks it up, tries to get it away unsuccessfully. First big play of the ball game, and it's for Jackson State University. You know what, Tom? It's one of the things that you that most fans don't pay attention to, and that's and that's the special teams. A play like that, not only do you give away possession, but you give teams incredible field position. If you give away three points in a drive, you should have been able to punt it back. Hey, this ball just goes right through the punter's hands. I mean, you, you got to make up. You got to make that catch. A good snap, good timing, good protection. Just flat dropped it. And now you give GSU a chance to start the game with, with seven or three points at worst, and you put yourself in a hole. Hey, statistics are statistics. A team that scores first wins 73% of the games. It just, it just is what it is. And you make a play like that, you put yourself in a big hole. David Grady, number 24, put the pressure on Cisneros, and it's first and 10. Jackson State to the ground. Carlos Simpson, number four, takes the first snap of the game. Now, we were told prior to the game, Trey Rutland would start. He did not start last week. Jimmy Oliver started, but both of those quarterbacks saw action last week. Yeah, uh, Oliver and Rutland shared the duties last week, uh, primarily after Oliver couldn't get it done early in the game. Uh, Rutland, the transfer from Mississippi State, uh, who started, actually started four games for Mississippi State before he transferred in, was expected to be the starter today. So, Carlos Simpson makes the first play of the game for Jackson State. And now Trey Rutman is in at number seven. That is Hall. Now that is his first carry of the season. As we documented in the open, Rod, Hall had the left ankle injury, so he was unable to play in the first game. But here's the starting quarterback, Trey Rutman. Yeah, Rutman, a good-looking athlete at 6'3", 230 pounds. And, you know, when you get down on the field and looked at him yesterday uh, in, in the walkthrough, he, he looks bigger than that. Hey, he, he's more of a... a uh, a 6'4", 250 type guy, a mini Culpepper, if you will. 6'3", 230 officially, the sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia. He was 4 for 14 for 58 yards and two interceptions last week in a loss to Delta State, 27 to 15. Now he's got the ball, he's got a first down inside the 10, and he dives close to the 2. It'll be first and goal for Jackson State. A great job by Rutman, recognizing that they didn't have anybody open across the middle. They're trying to hit the dig route. Breaks coverage to the left and gets a fantastic block out of Keith Camp, the wide out there, doing a great job of uh, holding off the defensive back. See, there's nobody open on that dig route, so he breaks contain. We've got receivers blocking on the perimeter. Nothing worse than a pesky receiver all on your chest there. You're trying to make a tackle for your team, and some little guy is pushing you all over the place. First and goal from the two. Negative 29 yards on the ground last week for Jackson State as they threaten from the two. Rutland to Hall. And he is stopped shy. Bottom of the pile, number 55, Nashon Bigham made the initial contact. Here is the offensive line for Jackson State. Lorenzo Breland, the center, anchoring the line. The backs and receivers, Eric Haw, back into the lineup, along with the fullback, Lavarius Giles. Yeah, Lavarius Giles is a, a two-time champion, the 100 and 200 meter dash in this last conference. He's got great speed. Rutland keeps it himself. And he is into the end zone. Jackson State opens the scoring, taking advantage of the special teams miscue by Tennessee State. 
if you're Jackson State, we talked about this in the keys in the keys of the game, and they open. Hey, you've got to find a way to get the run established. Uh, and they have to decide what kind of team they're going to be. Are they going to be a physical, in-your-face, attack-type running team, or are they going to throw the ball? We've had a quarterback scramble for big yards. We've got a fullback run up the middle for about five more yards, another scramble, and then a plunge in the end zone. They're trying to set the tempo right now. We're going to play physical. We're going to attack you. Extra point attempt from Eric Perry, number 39. And it is good. So Jackson State goes on top, seven to nothing, on the touchdown run by Trey Rutland. But this is the play that made it possible through the hands of the punter and Jackson State headed to Painter. More on Sports South, the Southern Heritage Classic. After this, welcome back to the Liberty Bowl, the Southern Heritage Classic on Sports South. Jackson State has a seven nothing lead over Tennessee State, capitalizing on the special teams miscue the scoring drive goes five plays 25 yards takes up two minutes 25 seconds and Jackson State could not start this game any better Rod absolutely I mean you want to talk about running the ball five times gaining 25 yards five yards of play in holding the football let's not forget last week against Delta State Delta State held the ball for eight more minutes 38 minutes Delta State had the ball if you allow that to happen to you you have no chance to win Jackson State getting off to a great start, holding the ball and getting that run established. Kevin Morrell set to kick it away. Again, it's a short kick. And into Jackson State territory. Ronald Evans, number 12, with the return. And good field position for the Tigers. You know, Rick, Rick Kamaji is a, a good football coach and been doing this for a long time, but this is the second kickoff where they've tried this little pooch kickoff. They surprised him the first time. You got a fair catch out of it. Now that Tennessee State's had a chance to see this, they're going to game plan for it and say, hey, up back, take that short kick and take it right up the field. It, it, you know, if you want to work the trick play, you may fool me once, you will not fool me twice. And it results in great field position for Tennessee State on the Jackson State 43-yard line. to the ground. <laughs> Quite a collision there. Number yeah, 28, buddy. Javaris Williams gets things started for Tennessee State. And that was number five, Keith Camp. And they met with some friction. You know what, Keith Camp, uh, for a little guy, he got up there and he got his nose stuck in there. But uh, Mr. Williams carrying that football is bringing the heat. I'm telling you, at 215 pounds, he is not going to shy away from contact. That results in a first down for Tennessee State. Keith Camp, 5'11", 190, the senior from Dayton, Ohio. First down from the Jackson State 31-yard line for Tennessee State. Quarterback is number 16, Antonio Hefner. Missed two games last season with a shoulder injury. Design quarterback run goes nowhere. 97, Corey Clark had it all the way. Yeah, Clark makes another nice play here, getting up there and, and being a, making a physical stop. If you look at, at what they're trying to do at, the, at Jackson State right now, you see that they're keeping more guys in the box all right, than Tennessee State can block. You know, they're spreading the field, but they're still keeping seven guys in the box for Jackson State. They're going to force Antonio to, to throw the football with that bad hand. And now the officials will have a discussion before this second down and nine play for Tennessee State. Have a sideline warning charge for Jackson State. Now, what do they call it in the NFL, Rod? The get back coach, right? <laughs> yeah. Does he to get back? It's usually the strength coach. He's okay. always running up and down the sidelines, pushing people in the chest, trying to get them back. The last thing you want is to take a five-yard penalty for some nonsense like that. Well, you can under understand the excitement from Jackson State as it leads seven to nothing. Hector, first pass of the game. Nice catch. It is complete. 
Chris that is Johnson. Chris Johnson. Yes, what a grab by Johnson and a little bit of traffic there. Yeah, I mean, go figure that uh, Antonio uh, Hefner goes right to the only returning starter from last year, Chris Johnson. You know, and, and at 6'2", 180 pounds, he's bigger than most of these cornerbacks he's going to face today. See him go up and catch his ball at the highest point. It's a big-time catch there. And he came into the game averaging almost 30 yards per catch. That pickup good enough for a first down. Down to the Jackson State 20. Handoff. Williams. You'll only get one there. You can't miss number 97, Corey Clark, as the pile unravels. 6'3", 320 pounds from Collins, Mississippi, a transfer from Mississippi State. Yeah, and, and another preseason uh, uh, first-team all-conference pick. I mean, he's got great size, a 6'3", 320. Um, you know, he should probably be playing nose guard, but in, but in their defense, even though they have four guys on the front, he really is playing nose guard, even though he's at the two position. He's not right over the center, but he still plays as a nose guard. Five tackles for him last week against Alabama A&M. Razzle dazzle. Hefter still has it. Being pursued, and he gets it away. And it is complete. How did he do that? And that is Johnson again working his way open, and Hefner found him with a couple of defenders right at his ankles. Uh, but what are you going to do? You know, you, you've got a bad hand, you're a quarterback, you, you're feeling under pressure, your team's down 7-0, you're just getting started. The first thing you're going to do is find the only returning starter you have at wideout, the guy that's bailed you out for five touchdown catches last year. You're going to find him, and you're going to feed him. And that's exactly what he's doing. Great job keeping his poise after that play action fake didn't, didn't, didn't fool anybody. First and goal from the nine for Tennessee State. Hefner hands it off. Not much there for Javaris Williams. Williams, the 5'11", 215-pound junior from Richmond, Texas. Ran for over 1,200 yards last year. 11 touchdowns. Also had 13 catches and a touchdown receiving. Javaris Williams last week, 20 rushes for 123 yards, averaging 6.2 per carry. Yeah, and, and he did it coming off the bench. You know, I mean, the guy didn't even play the first couple of series of the game. He's still amassed a, a monster game statistically. Second and goal from the nine. For the Tigers of Tennessee State University. Hefter has it still. Got him. Gets rid of it. Through the hands, deflected and intercepted. Keith Camp has it. Comes out of the end zone and up to the 14 for Jackson State. Another turnover kills the Tigers from Tennessee State. You know, and this is what hurt Tennessee State last week. You know, we've got a quarterback that has a, a, a bit of a bad throwing hand. He's trying to make the play and force the ball in there. If that pass is another two yards out in front of the tight end here, it's an easy catch and turn. Makes a great fake, rolls out. Hand just bothers him a little bit. You see he's on his back foot when he throws that ball. Ball's high and inside. It gets picked off. And you got to credit Keith Camp, too. I mean, he's making some plays. Not only did he challenge Williams down here on the sidelines with a physical play, he also makes the grab on the interception. Went through the hands of Brandon Jackson, and Keith Camp has it for the interception. Jackson State has the lead, 7-0. Hello, I'm Melvin Johnson, president of Tennessee State University. Check out how we think, work, serve. Back at the Liberty Bowl, that is Marcellus Speaks. He made the tip on the last play that resulted in the interception. You take a look at the play, Rod, and he just gets a finger on that one. Yeah, we got a Antonio throwing it off his back foot, but Speaks makes a great play. No surprise there. He's an honor roll student, the student of the game. The, uh, he reads that play and makes, it, makes a good play on it. First play is on the ground for Jackson State. It is Hall, and he'll pick up 11 yards on the play. And now let's go down to James and check in with him on the sidelines. This is the worst-case scenario for Tennessee State and head coach James Webster. He said before the game that turnovers would test his team's mental toughness. Last week against Alabama A&M, three big second-half turnovers flipped the scales in favor of the Bulldogs of Alabama A&M. Now they already have two turnovers, and now it'll be up to their defense to hold Jackson State. Back to you guys upstairs. Thank you, James. Jackson State with the football and a 7-0 lead and a first down thanks to Eric Hall, who goes right back to work over the left side and will pick up two or three on the play. Number 93, Harold Ayodel making the play. 6-2, 3-15, the junior from Grand Prairie, Texas. 
Yeah, James Webster has done a great job uh, uh, trying to build this uh, TSU program up. He's gone far and wide. There are kids on this roster from Ohio, from Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, California, New Mexico. It's a, he's been getting kids from all over the country. His first win as head coach came two years ago in overtime in this game against Jackson State. Quick pass, batted in the air, and it falls to the turf. Ramon Willis had a chance at that one as Trey Rutland tried to fire to the near side. Well, that's a great job by, uh, by Mr. Willis getting up the field on the rush, recognizing the screens behind him and getting his hand on it. Yeah, you got the screen here and the ball headed back. You know what? I'll tell you what, that ball might have been headed backwards, making it a fumble. That looks like that could be a lateral. Is that ball going back, Tom? Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Definitely. it is. That's a fumble, folks. Oh, they missed one. From the shotgun, Rutland has some time. The lefty slings it long and off the mark. The fans hate to see that, but you know what? That was actually a good throw. There, there's nobody open. That hitch in the corner, there's nobody open on the hitch. Played cover two. Safety got over the top of the receiver, breaking to the corner route for your quarterback. Don't hold it and get a sack fumble or throw it into coverage. Just dump that thing out of bounds, punt it away, and then live for another day. Jackson State forced to punt it away. Brett Bennett will kick it away to the awaiting Chris Johnson for Tennessee State, who stands at his own 33-yard line. Yeah, Chris Johnson's a track guy. He's, uh, he's dangerous. They've done everything they could at the JSU to keep the ball away from him, and they continue to do so. He, he is that dangerous. Way out of bounds, and they'll spot the ball at the 47 of Tennessee State when we come back. 7-0 Jackson State in the Southern Heritage Classic. Laura Mc... You are watching Sports South. Back at the Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee for the Southern Heritage Classic on Sports South. It's a 7-0 lead for Jackson State trying to snap a four-game losing streak in this Classic. Here at the Liberty Bowl to Tennessee State University wearing the white Jackson State in the dark blue to the ground. Hefner keeps it himself. Crosses midfield still on his feet and then finally brought down. Yeah, Antonio Hefner is a fantastic athlete. He doesn't yet seem comfortable throwing the football. You know, we know he's got the bad ring finger. We took a look at it yesterday. It's purple and green in every color you'd imagine. It's, it's ugly looking. But uh, he's got to find a way to stay with his technique. Uh, Coach Webster's doing a good job trying to let him run the football, build some confidence before you get him in situations where he's got to throw it to move the chains. Reginald Moore, number 50 for Jackson State in on the stop after a five-yard pickup. And this is Hefner once again. A little pump, tipped, and incomplete. Looking for Williams, and the miscues have been the problem for the Tigers of Tennessee State on a snap for a punt. And then an interception, Rod. Yeah, you, you talk to Coach Webster as you look at the, all the miscues, and that, that drop screen that they just had was a big miscue because there was nothing but green grass in front of them. They're, they're, just, they're just making mistakes that beat themselves. I mean, Coach Webster said, hey, Rod, I don't feel bad about my football team despite the bad loss last week because all the pain that we've had has been self-inflicted. James Webster, his third year at Tennessee State, 8 and 15 overall. Big third down play for his team from the Jackson State 48. After the throw, incomplete. And that'll bring up fourth down. Fine coverage, no flags on the play. Number 19, Marcus Jamison was there. Yep, good coverage there. You know, you give a little ground, you make sure you don't make contact with the receiver early. Ball comes, you got your, your, uh, your right hand arm and knock that thing down, it's textbook. And it's tough to get the big linebackers to use his technique. See, he just, just got his left arm in there, his right arm in there, and, uh, and got that pass knocked down. Taylor Cisneros will punt it away. Jamar Johnson waits at his 10-yard line for Jackson State. Cisneros fields it cleanly and gets it away. Johnson the fair catch, all kinds of contact as the ball bounces around the 10-yard line. And that's where Jackson State will have it. As Tennessee State downs it at the 10. 
Well, the rule is that, you know, if, if, a, if a, a coverage man is being blocked into the returner, then there is no penalty. And right here, obviously, he's, he's right engaged with the... Yeah, that's, there's no penalty on that play. He's being blocked into the, uh, into the returner. That was Justin Baylor for Jackson State, who tried to make the block, but then pushed the man into Jamar Johnson. So from the 10-yard line, first and 10 for Trey Rutland. The sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia, and a transfer from Mississippi State. Trey, Trey Rutland was the number one quarterback prospect in Mississippi when he came out two years ago. Oh, big time town. To the 15, to the 20, a first down, and a 15-yard pickup for Eric Haw. And he must have been busting just to get out here after missing that first game of the season with the left ankle injury. Well, you know, Haw does a great job. Now, I love the way he gets his pants turned upfield and moves guys back. When you, when you watch Haw run, watch how many times he gets hit and knocked backwards versus how many times he makes first contact and gains another four yards like he did there. So with five minutes, 18 seconds to go in the first quarter, and Jackson State leading seven to nothing, they have a first down at their own 25-yard line. Again, audible. There's Johnson in motion. Paul gets the handoff. Up the middle, bounced off one man and got to the 30 for a five-yard pickup. Yeah, good lead block there on that ISO run play by number 29, Lavarius Giles, who's really a speed guy. I mean, he's the, he's the SWAC champion, the 100 and 200 meter dash, but right there he puts his pads down on the ISO block and goes and takes on the linebacker. Look at Eric Haw, six rushes for 38 yards. Starting to get his feet under him. Yep, he's bringing it. Second and six for Jackson State after the four-yard pickup by Hall. Rutland to Hall. Trying to weave his way and got nowhere. Stopped by number nine, Ramon Willis. And for more on Eric Hall, let's go down to James on the side. This is Eric Hall's first opportunity to play this season after having an ankle injury that kept him out of the first game. But after the last series, he went after his offensive line linemen, telling them that they needed to block a little bit more. You saw in the first play of the drive, he got a lot of yards. But this is a young man that really knows that this is one of his final seasons at Jackson State, and he wants this game for the coach. And you can see him on the sideline pointing at specific linemen saying you need to block better. Back to you guys. Thank you, James. Eric Hall, the junior from Detroit, Michigan. And he's jumped off the down here at the right tackle spot. And the flag is on the field. Third and eight situation is going to get worse for Jackson State with 3.32 to go in the first quarter from the Liberty Bowl. Before the snap, all start, number 78 on the offense. The penalty five yards. Yep, right tackle. And then we got the little, then we got the little kick step. That's a uh, Jonathan's uh, Salas. Uh, just a little nervous there. A true sophomore in the game. Probably his very first start. Actually, it is his very first start. He's replacing uh, Terrell Williams, so it is his first start. A little nervous. Got a big time All Conference defensive end across from him, Brooks, and uh, shaking in his shoes a little bit there, if you ask me. Third and 13 for Jackson State from its own 22-yard line. Rutland wants to throw. Fires a bullet, but it's at the feet of Jamar Johnson, and that'll bring up fourth down. And you know, we talk about Styles, the right tackle that just rocked offside in the previous play, and I'll tell you why, because on this last play, Mr. Brooks just blew by the young kid and put a big hit on the quarterback. So let's see now. If for Tennessee State, number five, Chris Johnson gets an attempt at a return. As Brett Bennett will kick it away, that is Johnson wearing number five in the white for Tennessee State. Stands at his own 40. Do they kick it to him or do they kick away from him out of bounds again? He's going to let it bounce. And Jackson State will surround it and down it at the 42-yard line. So Tennessee State. Coming up to its fourth possession. So far, two turnovers. 
And a three and out for the Tigers and James Webster. Uh, I mean, I know Rick Akamaji wants to avoid kicking the ball to Chris Johnson. He's, he's awful dangerous. But at some point, you're going to have to challenge the guy and, and give your folks who are coming down the field and coverage a chance to make a play. You can't keep Pooch kicking it, you know, kicking the ball out of bounds with these 23-yard kicks. Eventually, you're going to give TSU such great field position that they're going to have a, a huge advantage. Can't give the guys the ball inside the, uh, on the other side of the 40-yard line. Tennessee State threatened earlier in the quarter, got it down to the nine-yard line, but then there was a tip ball and an interception by Keith Camp. And Jackson State took over. To the ground. Javaris Williams with the carry as it goes out of bounds. Gets about eight on first down. You know, I think we'd be naive to think that Eric Hall running the ball for JSU and Javaris Williams running the ball for TSU aren't very aware of one another and how big this game is. And they both want the bragging rights after the game to say, hey, you ran for 100 yards, I ran for 200 yards. They're watching each other. There's no doubt about it. Second and five. Williams gets the call again across midfield and has some room. Inside the 30 and finally bounced out of bounds by the bros Hedgemon, but not before a monstrous pickup as he crosses over into Jackson State territory. Yeah, every, every, every time Jackson State doesn't line up with seven guys in the box, bang, here comes a TCU running game, and Williams is in your secondary. And once he gets there, he's got good speed, runs with good strength. Now look, see, everybody's blocked. Everybody's blocked. You got an extra man to, to get people blocked, and now you've got uh, Williams running down in your secondary. Not a good deal. They, they, they may need to go back to their strategy they use early in the game and load that box up and get that run stopped. 27-yard pickup. Williams gets the call again. Good cut. Inside the ten and oh. stumbles down at the seven. Ooh, that was nasty. A clear running lane to the end zone. Uh, wow. That was that was filthy. You see that the little back cut he made? A again, TCU has got more blockers than JSU has. This isn't about man on man getting beaten the run game. There just aren't enough guys to make the tackle. And now he gets in second, and here's your cut. Bang. Guy on the ground. Here's another cut. Bang. Guy on the ground. Just can't quite keep his feet. Look at this cut right here. Whoop. See ya. And he falls down. He got tackled by the uh, by the 10-yard line. 19 yards on the pickup. First and goal from the seven. And let's get the official word. Before the snap, the ball starts number 73 on the offense. The penalty is five yards, first down. Avern Alexander with the false start, and that pushes the football back to the 12-yard line. Here's, here's the theme for TSU. Can they get out of their own way? How sick are you going to be if you're James Webster, if you've got the ball first and goal on the six-yard line with all the momentum, when your lineman jumps offside, you have an incomplete pass, next thing you know, you're looking in, at, at third and goal from the 11-yard line. You've got very little chance to score here. They inflict so much damage on themselves by making bad penalties and poor decisions, it can get them beat. If they can get that harness, they're going to be a very, very good football team. But right now, they are beating themselves to death. Second time in the game that they've been in a first and goal situation. And on this occasion, a penalty will cost them here as they spot the ball on the 12. James Webster. Prior to Tennessee State, four years in a, as an assistant at North Carolina with John Bunting. He graduated from North Carolina, and his glory day, 1972, played linebacker. He was the most valuable defensive player of the 1971 Gator Bowl, which was a loss to Georgia, 7-3. to three. So James Webster knows how to play the game. They give it to Williams, and he might have gotten one. Hey, yeah, James Webster was a stud, man. He knocked guys all over the place playing outside linebacker for the Heels back in the 70s. I tell you, what, he's still in pretty good shape. I, I ain't taking him. You want a piece of him? I don't. Not uh, after the I, meeting we had with him yesterday. Yeah. Uh, I asked him a question. He gave me back a question. <laughs> I was a little worried. I thought I was going to grab you by the neck for a minute there. I was a little worried. Very <laughs> intense, but very gracious, very cordial, giving us some of yeah, his time. He was fantastic. Yesterday, as the teams had their walkthroughs, the uh, Coach Kamaji also giving us some time and some of the players as well as we got our first look at the Liberty Bowl. Williams through the middle. Drags a couple of tacklers down to the five. 
Malcolm Palmer had him around the legs. And that'll bring up third down. Yeah, Malcolm Palmer, number 26, is a uh, is a very, very intelligent guy. He's an honor roll student. He's a little undersized to play in the line of scrimmage and only 220 pounds. But he plays with great heart and, and good pad leverage. And uh, he makes some plays. I, I think if you run the ball at him for too long, he's going to have problems. But if you if you try to run some misdirection, he's probably going to figure that out and make a play on you. Third end goal from the five with less than a minute to play in the first quarter. Hefner with the instructions for his lineman. Williams, correction, right, Terrence Wright barrels his way into the end zone. Terrence Wright gets his chance, and he cashes in. Yep, Terrence Wright, the, the sophomore, got the start last week after actually outperforming Javarius Williams in the spring. And Coach Webster said, hey, listen, I'm going to play the best guy. The guy who has the best, screen, the best spring is going to start. And here we have Wright making a great run in the middle, dropping his shoulder pads, getting underneath number 27, and pushing him back in the end zone. Good football play there. Eric Benson will try to tack on the extra point for Terrence Wright. His second rushing touchdown of the season. The sophomore from Houston, Texas gets Tennessee State on the board, and there's problems again. The extra point is blocked. Oh, jeez. Benson is momentum interrupted by the bobbled snap, and it's 7-6 to six with 44 seconds to go in the first. And, and you know what's crazy about this is this is exactly how they won the game last year in overtime. They had a bobbled snap in the, in the overtime. The guy picked it up and scored on it, and that's how they beat Jackson State last year. Jackson State has figured out a way with their scheme to block kicks against TSU. They did it last year in the overtime, and they're doing it again now. Keith Camp came in to block it as Eric Benson tried for the extra point. The snap was a little bit low, though, Rod, but it looks like it could have been fielded. But here's the run from Terrence Wright, who would not be denied. I'll tell you what, you got some great blocks up there by Eugene Blanks. Great. Cecil Newton, the center, getting guys pushed back. Duvall Young, number 20, not 20 uh, excuse me, number 68, knocking guys back. I mean, it. it, it Mormon, you probably could have scored on that play right there. I think I could have. I think he, you could have. He ran right over Willie Williams. I don't know if you would have scored. I would have taken it in, <laughs> I think. Back in my heyday, which we won't talk about. It is 7-6, to six, uh, and they're whooping it up here at the Liberty Bowl. This is the Southern Heritage Classic. The 18th Southern Heritage Classic, founded by Fred Jones, a show business promoter from Memphis, and it has grown by leaps and bounds ever since it started here in the Liberty Bowl, which opened in 1965. You know, how, how delicate, you know, is, is a kid at 18, 19, 20, 22 years old. If you're the coach of Tennessee State and you want to keep your guys from making mental errors, if you kick them out of practice and make them run laps and beat the heck out of them, what happens? The kid could easily lose his confidence and be a non-factor for you the rest of his career. So you got to kind of cop him, then you got to kind of kick him, but you got to find a way to get these kids to stop making stupid penalties or you're not going to win any football game. This is Giles, just shy of the 30. Horse collared down by Tennessee State, and that's where Jackson State will take over. First and 10 with 37 seconds to go in the first quarter. Brandon Gouch, number 17, up around the helmet area there, dragging down the ball carrier. Yeah, Brandon, a wide receiver, getting down there and getting it mixed up a little bit, being physical. You like to see that out of the out of young wideouts. On special teams with a chance to play. Yep. Why not mix it up it. a little bit? Yep, get after it. You got man-to-man -man coverage here. Looks like a blitz. And there they go. Hand off to the ground. And number 10, Reno Thompson, came up and delivered a blow. Yeah, good play by Thompson getting up to the line of scrimmage quickly to help clean this up. Because if he doesn't, Mr. Hall can easily break this tackle and pull away from the big guy. Gets up here, boom, delivers a shoulder pad, knocks him back. Yeah, Lavaris Giles good felt job. it from Harold Ayodell. And also from number 10, Reno Thompson, the six foot, 190 pound junior from Nashville, Tennessee. And that brings up second and eight for Jackson State. And that will do it in the first quarter. 7-6, to six, 
Jackson State in the lead, but Tennessee State scoring on its last possession. That's number 25 barreling into the end zone, Terrence Wright. It's 7-6 at the Southern Heritage Classic. Back at the Liberty Bowl for the Southern Heritage Classic. We have completed 15 minutes of play. Seven to six, Jackson State leads it. Great crowd on hand at the Liberty Bowl for tonight's game. The 18th annual Southern Heritage Classic. Jackson State is in the dark blue with the football. Tennessee State in the white jerseys and blue pants. And look at Rutland. Scramble and dive across the 30 yard line to make something out of nothing there on second and eight. And now let's go back down to the sidelines and check in with James Barrett. If Jackson State wins this game this evening, they'll have a lot to do with this football. Both teams had were forced because of the Nike sponsorship to use the Nike 3005 collegiate football. The problem is neither team uses this ball during the regular season, so all of the balls for today's game are straight out of the box like the one that you see right here, which means that on special teams, Tennessee State has had a problem handling the ball because it's so slick. No Normally you have an opportunity to break the ball in, but now because it is a brand new ball, you just have to go with it and overcome it a death. Thank you, James. Rutt on the left, he lofts it up and just a bit long for his receiver. Looking for Christopher Johnson. Rod, follow up on the ball a little bit. Have you run into a situation like that ever? Yeah, you know, I'm surprised that they didn't get the balls earlier enough during pregame to give them a little scuff up. You rub them on the ground and get them right. You know, it's a, I think it's a, it's convenient, but the fact of the matter is that Tennessee State's not doing a great job handling the ball. They've had this problem last year. They had it last week, and they're having it again. Until Jackson State starts having the ball slip around them, I got to, I've got to believe that those kids got to do a better job of handling the football, period, end of story. Brett Bennett to punt it away, and we get a whistle before the snap. Chris Johnson will await this punt. Timeout is charged to Tennessee State. That's their first timeout of the half. But Tennessee State wants to take a timeout prior to the punt. We're just moments into the second quarter. That is the head coach James Webster on the left with the white shirt for Tennessee State University. James Webster also an assistant coach at Wake Forest from 1988 to 1993 and an assistant at East Carolina from 1995 to 2000. And he coached a pretty good player who has gone on to quite a career in the NFL, Julius Peppers at North Carolina. Yeah, Julius Peppers not a bad football player. And, uh, and, uh, and Webster had a lot to do with his development, especially keeping him from, from playing exclusively basketball. Uh, and one time Julius uh, thought the football wasn't the way he wanted to go. And, and uh, Coach Webster kept him in that game. It's turned out to probably be a pretty good career move, you think? I think so. He was drafted by Carolina second overall in 2002. Julius Peppers playing for the Carolina Panthers and the ball will be down at the 30. So Tennessee State will take over with 1357 to go here in the second quarter. As Chris Johnson made the play on it and they'll start from the 30 trailing seven to six. I'm Mr. Brown. You are watching Sports South. Back at the Southern Heritage Classic from Memphis, Tennessee. 7-6, Jackson State in the lead. Antonio Hefter in the first quarter. Two of six passing, one interception for just 20 yards. Remember, he had that swollen ring finger. He'll hand off here, and it'll go nowhere. Yeah, as you start to go down the stats, you see that the, that the Tennessee State is leading in first down, rushing yards, passing yards, passing attempts, completions, total yards. They're also leading in penalties and turnovers, and, and that's why they're still trailing on the board right now. And, and that pressure uh, squarely goes on your quarterback. Uh, Antonio Hefner has, has got to take care of the football, get his, get his team in the right run play, and, and be efficient. Hefner has three rushes for seven yards as well. The junior from right here in Memphis, Tennessee. Go, 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 go. 
Hefner keeps. Makes a move at the 35 and gets up to about the 38. So that will bring up third and short for Tennessee State with just over 13 minutes to go here in the second quarter. Yes, Jackson, uh, Jackson State comes on the, uh, on the blitz. Uh, Hefner senses it rather than try to wait in the pocket for one of these guys to get open uh, versus man-to-man -man coverage. He sees a crack in the... Uh, in the armor and bang takes off and picks up six yards. It's a nice decision. Good call rather than forcing it up against the uh, cover defensive back. Third and two in Tennessee State will operate from the shotgun. The handoff is Williams and he is taken down in the backfield. Yes, finally taken down by Corey Clark. Who had the target squarely on Williams and caught him in the backfield. You know and, and there again. JSU is getting ready to blitz again, but they can't get lined up. See, you only have two guys in the line of scrimmage. That is a completely botched defense uh, with fantastic results. Again, we go back to the quarterback. Mr. Hefner has got to decide, hey, listen, I see these guys blitzing the wrong way. I'm going to correct this play, and I'm going to run it to the, to the opposite direction. Jamar Johnson stands at his own 22, waiting for the punt. Comes up to receive it. And is knocked down. Number 26 for Tennessee State, Kevin Bledsoe. Took down Johnson. Fine play on special teams by Bledsoe. We are in Memphis, Tennessee for the Southern Heritage Classic here at Liberty Bowl Memorial Stadium. 7 to 6. Jackson State leads it. Tennessee State has won the last four matchups here at the Classic. Tom Wormy, along with Rod Smith and James Barrett, patrolling the sidelines. Jackson State, first and 10 from its own 34-yard line. Haw. Eric Haw, not much. Ramon Willis, and we've called Ramon's name quite a few times so far here in the first half as we check out the game summary thus far. Williams with nine carries and 76 yards, and the punt was crucial. Jackson State cashed in the special teams miscue by Tennessee State. Rutland with three carries for 19 yards. And Terrence Wright had the touchdown run for Tennessee State from five yards out to cap the drive for the Tigers. Good decision by the quarterback. There. Pass into the flat. And Haw will pick up. Six or seven. Try to get them into a manageable third down situation. Yep, TSU is showing a lot of zone. So what does uh, Jackson State do? They run a guy right down the sideline. They run a back out there where there's a void in the flat. Go ahead and dump it on out there to your running back, to Taha, and let him make a couple yards. It's a good decision by the quarterback and well executed by the offense. Good football. Eric Haw ran for nine touchdowns last season. Trey Rutland, one of five. For those five yards right there. Rutland has a two yard touchdown run. Dumps it off. Lavarius Giles gets away across the 35, but he'll be well short of the first down. Lavarius Giles, the, uh, the quote unquote fullback in this offense. Got to rise out of the crowd there with some nifty moves. Yeah, yeah there aren't a whole lot of fullbacks out there that run four three and a 40 yard dash and then a conference champions in the 100 meter dash and Giles is a tremendous athlete and actually a physical football player as well I mean not afraid to mix it up six foot one 220 pounds the senior from Mississippi Johnson it's a bounce at the 20. Rolls inside the 10. Jackson State will cover it. They'll mark it at the 1. Brett Bennett knocks it down inside the 1-yard line, and Tennessee State will have to take it 99 big ones if they want to score on this one. I'd like to... I want to take another look at that because it looked like he had his hand on this ball, but his foot on the line. Nonetheless, seven to six, Jackson State, nine and a half to go in the half. 
Back at the Liberty Bowl, Jackson State with a 7-6 lead. Tennessee State with awful field position. As we take a look at the play, and the officials appear to have made the right call, Rod. Yeah, I, I misspoke. I thought that uh, if you have your foot in the end zone that, and you're touching the ball, that that's, uh, that's going to be a touchback. But I've been informed that uh, as long as the ball is across the plane, then you're good to go. And then the officials did make the correct call there. Oliver McNeil for Jackson State making a great play on special teams as Williams comes out of his own end zone. Almost bounced off a tackle and leans forward to about the five. Second and six for Tennessee State University. Losers last week to the defending SWAC champs, Alabama A&M. 49 to 23 in the John Merrick Classic, which is played at LP Field, which is where the Tennessee Titans play their home games, as do the Tennessee State Tigers. Yep. You know, if you're if you're TSU, I don't know if you want to take on Daniel Brooks, number two, at 6'4", 240 pounds, senior transfer in from UT. He was actually Mr. Tennessee coming out of high school. You don't want to start running the ball over there on that left side of the offensive line because that guy's a monster. Promoted from linebacker to defensive end, number two, Daniel Brooks for Jackson State. And we have a whistle, and there is a flag on the field. Yeah, you're not going to make a whole lot of money running over there. That's for sure. So the penalty against Tennessee State will move the ball back to about the three-yard line and bring up second and eight for the Tigers. One thing we know for sure tonight, the Tigers will win the game. Both teams <laughs> nicknamed Tigers. That's pretty good stuff. And the team that is the <laughs> constant resident of this stadium, the Memphis Tigers, they play all their home games here at the Liberty Bowl. So if your name is not Tigers, they don't let you on the field here in Memphis, Tennessee. <laughs> Just about, right? Yeah. All-star, number 68 on the offense. The five yards. Well, what's happening here is there might be some confusion because the band is extremely loud, and now they kind of quiet down a little bit. I think the coaches wanted the band to settle down a little so the players could hear the signals. Yeah, that's brutal. Your, your own band's working against you. I mean, the bands are fantastic that we have here tonight. There you go over there to the right side again. What I tell you, if you run over there at number two Brooks, you're going to have a very, very long day. Yeah, Brooks is 6'4", 240 pounds, a senior from Jackson, Tennessee. You know, and he's just better than a lot of guys he plays against. You you watch him, he's get it. he gets his hands out, he initiates contact, he creates separation, he gets his outside arm, his outside arm and leg free, and then is an aggressive tackler at the ball. Plays much, much bigger than 240. A transfer from Tennessee. Now anchoring the defensive line for Jackson State, and he dives in and almost had the ball carrier in the end zone as Williams gets away and rumbles out to the 10. He'll be shy of the first down. And Williams said, hey, coach, can we try this right side of the line of scrimmage? I don't want to run this ball over there by number two anymore. Right, let's, let's, let's try that other But he side. almost got in there. Watch him. Right at his ankles. That is Brooks. Yeah. And Brooks almost made the play anyway. Yeah, he's a beast. Dominique Johnson finally made the stop. That'll bring up fourth and three. And the punter, Taylor Cisneros, comes out. Jamar Johnson. Waits at his own 44-yard line. Cisneros from the end in Jackson in the end zone. Punt block was on. Fielded by Johnson and taken down. Kevin Bledsoe, another big play on special teams by number 26. We've got six minutes, 56 seconds to go in the half. 7-6, Jackson State. Welcome back to the Liberty Bowl and Rod, the band director and head coach Webster better get on the same page real soon. Yeah, on that last series, you got the band right down here in the end zone playing <laughs> so loud, you get a full start and an offside because they can't hear anything. And if you want to take on James Webster, All-American linebacker, you help yourself, Mr. Band Director. Diving forward, Trey Rutland, the quarterback for Jackson State, and he gets up near the 45. That'll bring up second and short for Jackson State University. Trey Rutland from Atlanta, Georgia. Has the touchdown. 
for Jackson State in this game. And here he goes again, just taking off, Rod. Yeah, it, it's a design trap on the inside there. And they pull across and put his, the, the trap on uh, number nine, Ramon Willis. And uh, quarterback gets up the field. Very, very intelligent play. Uh, just take what the defense gives you. Paul on the handoff. And he may even lose a yard on that play. Flushed out by the Tennessee State defense. Number 17, Brandon Gouch. And we've called his name a couple of times here in the first half, and I have to be honest, Gouch not listed on the depth chart, yet he's in there making some contributions on defense. Yeah, you know, I, I never liked that trap, fool them type run play on second and short. I mean, it, it's the kind of down and distance where you should line up, run an ISO, and get right after him. The worst situation you're going to come up with is getting a yard. But if you're on that trap stuff, you can lose yardage. Third and two. There goes Rutland. And they just piled on him. 27, Calvin Baker. Number 10, Reno Thompson. And that'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, case in point. You saw earlier in the game when, when JSU got in the eye formation and pounded the ball in there with ice still runs, direct run, run plays. Well, you should at least gain something. But here we got a quarterback scrambling out. We got a trap play. It doesn't work, especially when the defense loads the line of scrimmage with guys or they're blitzing. Dominique Cromarty, number 45, is deep for Tennessee State. Chris Johnson has fielded every punt so far, or at least been back in coverage. But here's Cromarty getting his chance from the 23. And he gets up to the 29. Tennessee State Tigers will take over from there. And the Jackson State defense has stepped up for head coach Rick Comagy. Well, we talked about it in the open that the key to the game for them was trying to figure out a way to get that run stop. Here you see the pass deflection and pick off. Another great play, great pass defense. Another great play on the run defense. Hey, listen, they were out gained by 300 yards on the ground last week. They had to bring their intensity. They had to play physical and get after guys. And that's exactly what they're doing. Outstanding effort by JSUD so far today. Tennessee State going on offense with 106 yards so far in the game today. Ronald Evans around the corner. They'll pick up five or six across the 35 to the 37. Ronald Evans, just 5'9 and 185 pounds, a junior from Birmingham, Alabama, but he can move those feet. Yeah, he's got great speed. And if you can get him the ball on the perimeter, he can be extremely effective. You know, I don't know if Walter Payton is still in the stadium, but if he's not, I think uh, you might want to hold that ball in tucked to the body before you get a fumble and you'll never see the field again. And, Rod, you mentioned Walter Payton, the Jackson State. Great. He went on to a tremendous NFL career, of course. Career rush yardage, over 16,000 yards for Walter Payton. 110 career touchdowns, dying tragically November 1st of 1999. Just 45 years old from liver disease. Hey, you know what? Walter Payton was, the, was, the, was just an animal. And, and the people that I know that, that played against him when he was in his prime said, Rod, he is the absolute last guy you want to tackle. And he is the absolute last guy you want to be a blitzer on because Walter Payton would put his helmet right in your chin and knock you flat on your back. Great player. Graduated from Jackson State in 1975. An incompletion for Tennessee State. Walter Payton, the fourth overall pick in the NFL draft by the Bears and won the Super Bowl in the 85 season. Super Bowl 20, 46 to 10 over the New England Patriots, and Richard yeah. Dent also yeah, yeah, on that yeah, team yeah, 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 for the well, Bears. Well, yeah, well, talking about knock, knocking flat on your back, you look at number 27, Willie Williams here, put the lick, put the smack down, boop, right on your chin strap. It's the worst place to get a cut right on your chin strap. Brutal. Walter Payton entering the Hall of Fame in 1993. His number 34 jersey is retired. There goes Hefner. Big game for Hefner to the 42 of Jackson State. 16-yard pickup. Yeah, Coach Jane Webster is, is doing what he can to, to let Antonio Hefner get off to a good start, give him some run plays, try to take care of him. The only bad thing about running the football is you see him on the sidelines now. Maybe he re-injured that finger. I don't want to guess, but I know it's horribly swollen and painful. Another thing, at the end of that run from uh, JSU, number 26, Malcolm Palmer, has a great open field tackle right there. If he doesn't make that tackle, Hefner scores. So number one, Calvin McNarl, the freshman, comes in. Keep your head up, 
to direct the Tennessee State offense. Uh -oh. Right up the middle is Terrence Wright. And he gets down to the 36. Well, you know what ben, Bo Schembechler said about freshmen, right? Best thing about freshmen? They, be, they become sophomores. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. McNarl actually got into the game last week. Rushed three times for 43 yards and averaged 14.3 per carry and scored a touchdown. Attempted three passes and gained just three yards. So I don't expect to see him put it up right now, depending on the medical situation and status of Antonio Hefner, the starter for Tennessee State. Little misdirection. And it does not result in much. Number eight, Troy Smith, the wide receiver, came across but could not produce much out of that play. Jackson State all over it. Yeah, if you're, if you're Jackson State and you know there's a freshman in the game playing quarterback, what do you do? You start it. You hammer him number one, right, which they did. And number two, you start blitzing him like crazy because he, he hasn't seen these blitzes in, in actual game situations. It's going to cause confusion, confusion and uh, it make him panic. That's exactly what they're doing. Antonio look, look Hefter, blitzing. Hefter is back in it's here. Blitz all the way. On third and ten. Hefter the little pitch forward. And it's blown up. 26, Malcolm Palmer made the stop as Hefter tried to shovel it forward. You know, that's two plays that Malcolm Palmer's made in the last four snaps that have really been big time game savers. W what a great call by Rick Kamaji to run the uh, to run the under toss against the blitz. You know they're gonna be up the field. All you have to do is break one tackle and it's a touchdown. Unfortunately, Malcolm Palmer's getting it done. That was Antonio Graham who took the pitch. But it was Palmer who stopped him in his tracks with a minute 50 to go here in the half and a 7-6 lead for Jackson State University as the defense huddles on the sideline. The guy right in the middle there, number two, Daniel Brooks, appears to be the defensive leader for this Jackson State team. Yeah, absolutely. And he's he's probably the best defender, if, uh, if not the second best defender on the field today. Our college football coverage continues here on Sports South. Georgia Southern against Coastal Carolina. That is next Saturday, 7 o'clock, right here on Sports South. Chris Hatcher, the new head coach at Georgia Southern, and David Bennett at Coastal Carolina. What a job he has done with that program. Rod and I will have that for you next week, right here on Sports South. Tennessee State will go on fourth down. Hefner remains in the game. Feels the pressure and gets it away. Incomplete. Looking for Brandon Belvin, who could not come up with it. Yeah, Brandon Belvin uh, had a step on the corner. All he had to do was get his hands on that ball and gather it in. A lot of times, Cats uh, will try to, try to catch the ball on the run and keep moving instead of Grant making the, the catch and falling down, he's reaching out for it. He really had to get his body across in order to make that catch. He had Keith Camp, the defender number five, all kinds of twisted around. So on downs, Tennessee State turns it over, and here comes Jackson State operating from its own 38-yard line with one minute 44 seconds to go and a one-point lead, seven to six, here at the Southern Heritage Classic at the Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee. The lefty slings it in there incomplete. Trey Rutland looking for Jamar Johnson, and they could not connect. Yeah, the Trey just, Trey Rutland just flat missed him. I mean, that uh, that's about as open as you can possibly get. He's a little pumped up and threw it behind him. A little bit of the, a little bit of an overstride, if you will, on that throw, and that leaves the ball high and right. Brings up second and ten. For Jackson State University, six and five last year for the Tigers. They started five and one, but did not finish as strongly as head coach Rick Kamaji would have liked in his first season at Jackson State. This is his second year, and they're 0 and 1 so far. This is going to be a first down and more down the sideline. Lavaris Giles out of bounds, and he gets deep into Tennessee State territory, and they pop one big here with a minute and a half to go in the half, Rod. 
I'll tell you what, I'll tell you who makes this play, Trey, Trey Rutland, holding this ball in his hands to the very, very last minute and allowing the rush to get up the field. Bang. Then he hands it off to Giles, who's the, your 100 and 200 meter track champion. And once he gets in the open field, he's gonna be he's gonna have problems. 38-yard pickup for Lavaris Giles. As Trey Rutland tries to move this offense down the field with just a minute and 31 seconds to go in the second quarter. First and ten from the 24. Swings it out wide to Giles. Pursuit from Kellen Woodard, number 53 for Tennessee State, who stayed with Giles. Pickup of about two on first down brings up second and eight. Yeah, if, you, if you're going to run a guy across in motion, run Giles across in motion, and then try to throw him on the quick screen, the least you got to do is get him reset. So the defense has to reset. If the defense is flowing toward where you're going to try to get the ball, you're going to have problems. Second and eight as the clock continues to tick. From Tennessee State, 22. Rutland over the middle, incomplete. Looking for Carlos Simpson, who was between two defenders and paid the price on that one, Rod. That's a big time hit out of your right safety, closing the gap and putting a lick on him. Williford and Levine put the pop on yeah, Carlos Simpson. Yeah, that's a good ball. The only place you could put it and smack. He takes a couple of shots. You know, if you want to play wide receiver in this league and you want to run a ball, you want to catch a ball across the middle, you've got to be prepared to take a shot right in your chin. That's exactly what happened. Watch Good physical out. play out of your safety. Yeah, watch out for number six, Anthony Levine from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, joined by his teammate Larry Williford, and the play clock runs down to zero. Delay of the game by the offense. The penalty's five yards, third down. How does that happen, Rod? Well, one of your receivers takes a big hit and everybody wants to go over there and ensure his physical safety and that he's still functioning, still working, <laughs> and uh, and not paying attention to the clock. We had about half the football team over there to congratulate him on keeping his headgear on instead of getting lined up and ready to snap the football and cost him. Moves the football back to the 26 and a half yard line with 47 seconds to go in the second quarter. Jackson State on the move with a one point lead, 7 to 6 over Tennessee State here at the Southern Heritage Classic. Rutman has some time. It is complete. It is incomplete. Jamar Johnson, the intended receiver. Well, we got the side judge saying it's a catch, and we got the field judge saying it's, a, it's not a catch. I saw conflicting signals there. Anthony Levine comes up shaken up, but uh, and the field judge they're moving the ball, and now there's a discussion. Yeah. by two officials out yeah. of the 25-yard line. Yeah, field, they're, field, they're reversing it. Yeah, field judge had it as a catch. Excuse me, field judge had it as incomplete. Right. The side judge had it as a catch. There's also a Tennessee State player down on the field as well, so it is not a catch. Ruled an incompletion. And that is number six, Levine, getting tangled up with Jamar Johnson on this play. I'll tell you what, Jamar Johnson is bringing the heat to these wide receivers from JSU today. Wham! Now that's Levine making the hit. It, it, it looks like Johnson has the football. I mean, Rod, take a look at it. Does he not have that ball, or does it come out right there at nah, the very end? I, yes, I, there it is. I, I think that ball's out the there whole There it is. Way. Comes out at the end there. You know, when you get hit like that, there's a there's about a, a half a second of momentary paralysis that spreads throughout your body. And, you see, yeah, you, you get that numb feeling. Receivers have a tendency to let the ball land on their chest. It's, it rolls over and lands on the side, and that ball's down. Great shot by Anthony Levine, who's really a track guy. Most track guys aren't physical. The way Levine is. Anthony Levine is bringing the heat today. Brett Bennett for a 43 yard field goal for Jackson State with 38 seconds to go in the second quarter. And it is good. Brett Bennett adds three more points for Jackson State. Correction, Eric Perry. And Perry should be happy. First field goal of the season for Eric Perry. 
Blair Perry's got a great leg. He kicked a 52 yard field goal in the spring game. And so he's, he's, he's not unfamiliar with, uh, with pressure kicks and, uh, and making long ones. It seemed, it seemed to me he took the safe route there and just wanted to hit a little a little punch shot through the goal. Once again, we get a look at this here, Rod, and you can see the ball come out at the end after the stick by Levine. Yeah, when, when, now, when his back hits the ground, he can't feel his arms. I'm telling you, I've been hit like that before. It's not good. So he never has full possession of the football, ruled incomplete. Yep. And then Eric Perry steps onto the field and hits a 43-yarder to make it 10-6 Jackson State as we approach halftime, just 32 seconds to go. And Levine is headed to the locker room after that collision with Jamar Johnson. And you can see him holding his left forearm by his side as he is escorted into the locker room by the medical staff. Well, Anthony Levine has got to learn to get his arms inside and hit with the top of his shoulder pads. I mean, yeah, you see it on television in the pros, and it looks great when a guy's flinging a forearm at somebody. The reality of it is if you do that three or four times, one of those times, you're going to end up with a broken forearm or cracked elbow. You've got to hit with your pads and your face mask, not with your arms. Morell kicks it away, and he hits a ground ball picked up by Cromarty. Cost the 35. And taken down at the 37. Dominique Rogers Cromarty on the return. You know, we haven't talked much about number 45, Dominique Cromarty, but the, the, the fact of the matter is I'm aware of at least two professional scouts who are here to watch this kid play. 6'2, 185 pound, um, a conference champion in the 60 meter dash. He's got great speed. He is a consensus preseason All American. And, and knowing my, the history of cornerbacks in this great conference, he's going to play on Sundays, folks. You'll see him next year in a pro uniform. And he had six interceptions last year to lead the Ohio Valley Conference. Yeah. He's a stud. The reason why we haven't talked about him is because nobody's catching any passes his way. Probably not the best idea to throw it in his vicinity. No, stay away from him. Also had 47 tackles. In 2006, made five tackles last week, also had three pass breakups last week in the loss to Delta State, 27 to 15. The correction in the loss to Alabama A&M, 49 to 23. I don't know what they're thinking over there at Alabama A&M and trying to make a living of throwing the ball at one of the best cornerbacks in the nation. Not a good idea. Second and short for Tennessee State from the Jackson State 39 and don't look now but they are approaching field goal range 12 seconds to go in the half Hefner incomplete that was five on five Johnson against camp and camp comes up gimpy looks like the right leg for camp as he sits on the ground out of bounds at about the three yard line I'll tell you what about this freshman Kevin uh, McNair if, if he well he's listed at six feet here if he's six feet I'm seven feet that's the first thing the second thing is I'll tell you what he is giving his guys a chance to make a play on the ball that's all you want as a wide receiver hey quarterback don't throw it out of bounds don't throw it 15 yards behind me give me a chance to make a play on it give me a chance to compete and that's what he's doing he's showing a lot more pop in his arm than you'd anticipate after if you look down at him Keith Camp is up but for precautionary measures, we'll head to the locker room. Camp had the interception in the end zone as Jackson State was driving. Correction, Tennessee State was driving in the first quarter off the tip ball, and Keith Camp came up with the interception for the Jackson State Tigers. He also had his hands on that last pass. He's been playing some solid coverage out there at corner. He's having a, having a heck of a game. Five seconds to go. Antonio Hefner from the shotgun. Pursued for the back side. He gets away. Hefner heaves it. Intercepted. Malcolm Palmer makes the interception as the clock runs out of the first half. After 30 minutes of play, Jackson State with a 10-6 lead over Tennessee State. And the interception from Malcolm Palmer ends the first half from the Liberty Bowl. Jackson State 
in front as they are trying to snap a four game losing streak. If you're Jackson State, you got to be thrilled going in the locker room. You got accomplished exactly what you needed to do. You've got the run stop of TCU. You found an identity, uh, identity on offense, and that is running the football. Let's look at this last play here. We got, got it picked off. Malcolm Palmer, who's delivered some big hits today, comes up with an interception. All right, Rod, let's send it down to the field and James Ferrett. Coach Kamaji, first of all, you made a game time decision to play Rutland. It seems as though it's working out. So far, so good. You know, he's looking pretty good out there and doing some things that are real good. Throwing the football, and um, I think as he gets going in the game, hopefully it gets better. Your defense has been able to hold TSU to six points, but Javaris Williams is close to 100 yards. How can you contain him in the second half? Well, he's a great athlete. He's tough to contain. As long as we can stop him from crossing that end zone, we'll be fine. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. Thank you, James. Rick Kamaji has the lead here in his second year as the head coach at Jackson State University. His team leads it 10 to 6, kicking a field goal right before the end of the first half from the Liberty Bowl. As they whoop it up here in Memphis, Tennessee, Jackson State leads it 10 6. The halftime auto zone coming up next. Welcome back to halftime at the Southern Heritage Classic, sponsored by AutoZone. The Jackson State Tigers lead the Tennessee State Tigers 10 to 6. And now it is time to take a listen in to the Tennessee State University Band, the aristocrat of bands. <laughs>
That is the Tennessee State University marching band. The AutoZone halftime continues. I'm Mr. Welcome back to halftime at the Southern Heritage Classic, sponsored by AutoZone. The Jackson State Tigers lead it 10 to 6. And now it's time to take a listen to the Jackson State University band, the sonic boom of the South.
That is the Jackson State University Band, the sonic boom of the South. Our AutoZone halftime continues right after this. Welcome back to Halftime, sponsored by AutoZone and the Southern Heritage Classic. The Jackson State Tigers lead the Tennessee State Tigers 10 to 6. And Rod Smith, I don't think we should be surprised. The close ball game, it has been that way for the last three years. As we mentioned, the two teams separated by just eight points over those last three games. And last year, one point in overtime was the difference. Well, it's played out in some ways a lot like we anticipated with TCU shooting themselves in the foot. We had a punter drop a ball. We had, they threw an interception going in for a touchdown. They're killing themselves. On the other side of the ball, JSU's doing a great job of establishing their run. We've got Hall running the ball down the field. We've got Rutledge, the quarterback, making good decisions, running the football. I think it's going to go down the last play of the game. It usually does between these two teams. Let's take a look at some of the big moments from the first half. And it started with a miscue on special teams. Cisneros couldn't handle it, and this resulted in points for Jackson State. Yeah, and then JSU takes advantage of it, and Rutland pushes the ball in for a touchdown. Trey Rutland with a two-yard touchdown run, but here comes number 28, Javaris Williams. Great first half. Run. Yeah, Javaris Williams is going to end up being the school's leading rusher probably by the end of this season, and he's only a junior. Terrence Wright finished off that drive, going right up the middle, but they tried for the extra point. The miscue keep camp with a block. You better believe it. They, I mean, the hits just keep on coming. They're beating themselves with plays like that. They should have got that point. Lamaris Giles popping a big one there that led to a field goal attempt by Aaron Perry from 43 yards, and it was true. His first field goal of the season, and that's where we stand 10 6 at the half as we take a look at the numbers from the first 30 minutes, Ron. Right? Yeah, the, the Jackson State uh, the, the, in the last game, a uh, dramatic. Dramatically lost the turnover battle and dramatically lost the time of possession battle. Here, they're still behind a little bit on time of possession, but they're doing a great job with turnovers. They're securing the ball. They're giving themselves a chance to win. The AutoZone halftime continues right after this as we head to break with a 10-6 game. The Tigers from Jackson State lead Tennessee State. You're watching Sports South. The Southern Heritage Classic on Sports South is being brought to you by Dodge. Grab life. 10-6 is our halftime score. Jackson State leading Tennessee State. Time to check in with James Verrett. He is with the head coach of Tennessee State, James Webster. Uh, first of all, coach, first of all, your quarterback. Uh, he seems as though he's a little bit out of sync, but it seems though second half you're going to try to get him going. Well, you know, he's the guy that makes us go. we got to sell him down a little bit. He's made some good throws, some throws he made. You know, we wish he could have back. But we're going to sell him down the second half. So James Webster leads his team out of the field for the second half, trailing 10 to 6. What do you make of the comments from the head coach, Rod? Well, my first question would be, uh, is, is he healthy? Remember, we saw him go out late in that second quarter. Uh, you know he's banged up with the, with the finger, the, the swollen ring finger on his throwing hand. When he said we're going to settle him down or shut him down, my first question is, do you mean shut him down like actually take him out of the game, or do you mean try to get him into the rhythm by giving him some more runs and some, some more short throws? Antonio Hefner in the first half. Five of 13, two interceptions for 50 yards, a long of 15. Trey Rutland on the other side of the ledger for Jackson State, three of 10 for just seven yards, but they did it on the ground. Lavaris Giles, 41 yards. Eric Haw, nine carries for 36 yards as we get set for the second half. It's a tight game as it should be. Last year, it went down to overtime. A botched extra point resulted in a two-point conversion. And Brandon Williams caught that two-point conversion for Tennessee State as we get started here in the second half. Jackson State has the football on the kickoff. They're in the dark blue. Tennessee State is in the white. Giles gets things started for Jackson State as they take the field on offense. Yeah, in great field position for uh, Jackson State. Anytime you can get the ball out over the 35-yard line, you give yourself about double the chance of scoring points. 
Yeah, Rutland. Trey, Trey Rutland, you know, playing inside of himself. You know, he's out there trying to force the ball into coverage. Uh, he sees blitz. He's rolling out of it. He's doing a great job with the play action, including some of the trap plays in the run game that they've been running. And now they're going back to the out formation, hopefully getting back to more smash, smash my football. Five rushes for Rutland for 24 yards. An extra throw this time, and it is complete. Christopher Johnson right up the middle and a big hit early in the second half for Jackson State. Yeah, Chris Johnson is the uh, is the touchdown guy for Jackson State. He caught four touchdowns last year. He's got big play capability, averaged 20 yards a catch. And as soon as I say I back formation, run ball, what do they do? Throw the slant for a big game. That shows you. That's why I'm here sitting here with you instead of coaching. And I'm happy about that, so don't think <laughs> otherwise. 35 yards on the play for Jackson State to open up the second half as it leads 10 to 6 over Tennessee State. Rutland. Incomplete. Intended for Rodney Gray. Who by all rights, probably should have caught that ball, Rod. Yeah, you know, Rutland's a little excited. He just completed a, a, a nice pass. So this one, he gets back, he plants that left foot and puts a lot of heat on this ball. And, and there's just no need to do that. You throw it right through your receiver's hands. You can loft it out there, take your five-yard gain, and get on down the road. He didn't have to drill that in there. He's excited. He's pumped up. It makes all the sense in the world. Second and ten from the 27 of Tennessee State. You got a good look at Rodney Gray, 6'3", 210, a sophomore from Batesville. Man-to-man coverage, they're blitzing. Mississippi, and Rod sees some blitzing formations out there. Appears to be a broken play, and Rutland will go down. Four, five Tennessee State defenders all over that play. Golly, that's a tough, that's a tough play. Great call by Tennessee State to bring pressure. They showed it early, and you get the feeling that Trey Rutland could feel it coming. You see him out the line of scrimmage, he wanted to call an audible, he wasn't sure. Tennessee State backed off, they moved back up, he wasn't quite sure. He should have checked, he was right the first time, it was blitz all the way. And once you get back and there are guys coming from both sides, there's just nowhere to go. Puts him in a very perilous position. Unless they have a big gain here, it's going to be tough to kick a field goal. Kellen Woodard with the tackle, along with plenty of help from his defensive teammates. Third and long for Jackson, Jackson State. Incomplete. Yeah, but it looks like James Webster says, hey, look, you know what? My, my quarterback's injured. We're, we're struggling. We're not making a lot of plays. I'm going to start bringing the heat and blitzing, guys. It's a great shot here at the end of this play too. A little bit. Yeah, just a little, just a little, a little, a little love tap there. Yeah, yeah that's Cromarty on Johnson. Yeah, not trying to hurt the guy. You know, Cromarty hasn't hit anybody all day long. He's an All-American. He wants to get a little television time. Well, let's run a little contact out there. So here comes Eric Perry. 50 yarder? Yeah, going with a 50 yarder. Yeah, he kicked a 52 yarder in, uh, in the spring game. Perry puts the boot into it. Is it enough? It is. Wow. wow. 50 <laughs> yards from Eric Perry. Look at him. He can't find anybody to hug. The sophomore <laughs> from Miami. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Eric Perry puts Jackson State up 13 to 6 with a 50 yard bomb. The Southern Heritage Classic continues right after this. Welcome back to Memphis, Tennessee, where the smallest player on the field could be making the biggest difference, a 50-yard field goal from Eric Perry. That is his career long, and it is the Dodge drive of the game, Rod. You know what? Eric Perry listed at 5'8 is probably closer to 5'6 and a half. You see him here. He's trying to get chest bumps, but when, you, when you're 5'6, guys have a hard time getting that low. You get like waist bumps. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah you, get like, bumps. you get like waist bumps. <laughs> uh, he, was, he was fired up. Where's the chest bump? Yeah, yeah, yeah you go. I can't even do it. <laughs> look, look at 77. Hey, give me a hip bump. I love it. Look at him. Give it to him. Yeah, <laughs> Michael Smith, 77, is 6'4", 320 pounds. <laughs> oh, God. Wow, fantastic. A 50-yarder from Eric Perry, and it is 13 to 6. Here comes Jackson State. And they got something here. And they got something. That is Evans. 
Up the sideline and into Jackson State territory. That's how you answer a 50-yard field goal Absolutely. with a return into enemy territory by Ronald Evans. You know, James Webster's uh, ball club at TSU didn't show a whole lot of mental toughness in their first game, getting blown out in the second half, making mistake after mistake. But the, if, if you get to, to talk to him a little bit, you get the feeling that this team is going to get nothing but better and more competitive and mentally tough as this season progresses. And this is a perfect example of it. Last week, they've collapsed after a long drive, a 50-yard field goal. This time, they make the good blocks to get their uh, returner out past the 50-yard line. Number 46 on the kicking team was offside with the kick. The penalty is five yards from the end of the run. First down. 46 is E.J. Hampton. So that will add to the return for Tennessee State, which has played in all 17 previous Southern Heritage Classics. So you average what, about 12, 13 series a game? You're going to touch the ball on offense? Well, I'll tell you what, if there are two of them that are absolutely critical, you're looking at one of them right here. If you get field position like they have right here, and you're, and you're down by seven points, you've, you've got to get something out of this drive. From the Jackson State 44-yard line, Fumble. Oh, Jackson State has it. Javaris Williams fumbled it, and look who's on that ball. Daniel Brooks, number two for Jackson State. Oh. Coach Webster is absolutely sick. Wow. And now you're just sick as a coach. You can't believe it. The quarterback that you, that you you that you love and that you care about and, and recruited and brought in and trust in has got a bad will and he's just having a real tough time hanging on to the football right now. Hardest thing to do in the world as a venture kid that that's worked so hard for you. Third turnover leaders. Yes, third turnover of the game for Tennessee State and they go to the air. Carlos Simpson on the catch and that'll be a first down for the Tigers. You know, it, it looked it looked almost as if uh, Hall got over there a little. Uh, Javaris Williams got over there a little quick. You know, I, I mean, we didn't even have time at the quarterback position. Hefner didn't have time to catch the ball, turn, and truly get it extended. Seemed to me as though Williams got on the quarterback a little quickly. Maybe a little anxious to get the ball in his hand and try to gain some yardage. Eleven yard pickup on the pa pass play from Trey Rutland to Carlos Simpson. They move it to the Tennessee State 42. We've got movement along the line. And for Jackson State, that's number 76, Michael Harshaw. And there's Harshaw jumping the gun. Yeah, that's the second offside penalty that he's had today here. Getting a little nervous. He's filling in for Rochelle Williams, the freshman who just couldn't get it done last week. Over time, Mr. Terrell Williams, number 79, is going to be a great player for these guys. Right now, the true freshman is just not ready. Harshaw steps in, number 76, 6'4", 310. A little more developed, a little more polished, but he's got to stay on side. Rutland has some time now, plucked from the pocket, and he just slides down in front of three Tennessee State defenders. So he got back to the ori original line of scrimmage. Back to the 42 of Tennessee State for Trey Rutland. You know what, and, and there are some folks that would argue and say, hey, listen, you're up by seven points. You're playing in a big game, the classic. Go for the jugular. You know, beat him by 30 if you can. I disagree. I like what Rutland's doing, and that's taking care of the football, not giving Tennessee State anything easy. We'll punish it to you if we have to and make you go the long way. Trey Rutland getting the start today over Jimmy Oliver. They both saw action in the first game of the season. Rutland had trouble with the snap. Didn't appear to be off the mark, but he fumbled it momentarily and leans forward for a couple yards. You know, maybe I owe James uh, an apology down there on the sidelines. Maybe there is something to this ball. <laughs> Could be. Slippery pigskin out there. At hey, the... hey, James, I didn't mean what I said, man. That, that ball <laughs> is slick as all get out. Yeah, absolutely right. I blew it. Ask Tony Romo about a slick ball. Yeah, right? <laughs>
Got the head coach out of Dallas, didn't it? You played for Bill Parcells, did sure you not? Did. Oh, yeah. Bill was fantastic. Did he ever blame slick balls for poor play? No, he no. wouldn't. No. <laughs> Rutland pressured and brought down. Ramon Willis gets the sack. Rutland tried to pump fake, but Willis was not buying it. Well, here, there's good, and there's good and the bad of this thing. Here, here's, here's the good. He didn't try to force this ball into coverage. Okay, it's really easy for a quarterback to panic here and try to throw a duck up and get the thing picked off. Good job of not doing that. Here's the bad. The last three times they blitzed Rutledge, he has not seen it and or not made an adjustment to get himself protected. He has got to. And listen. Once they smell blood at TSU, Webster's been do Coach Webster's been doing this a long time. You might see Blitz every snap the rest of the game until Rutledge can figure out how to check out of the plays in and get protected. 14-yard loss on the play, so the turnover by Tennessee State does not cost them. From Artie from the 21. Flag comes out as he is tackled at the 22. And judging from the celebratory reaction from Jackson State, it could be against Tennessee State. There's holding. There is a Jackson State player down on his own 36 yard line. There's a flag on the play. And it goes against the receiving team, Tennessee State. That'll push him back. Justin Baylor, number 23, is the injured Jackson State player being helped off. Ladies and gentlemen, nice one. Holding number 21 in the receiving team. The penalty is 10 yards from the end of the run. First down. That's Marquez Hall, the sophomore, holding on the gunner, causing TSU a little more pain, self-inflicted. Jackson State has the lead at the Southern Heritage Classic, 13 to six, and a penalty is driving them in the wrong direction. South. Back at the Southern Heritage Classic, Jackson State in front, 13 to six. We're getting word from James Verrett on the sideline that two players for Jackson State, Trey Rutland and Eric Haw, are experiencing cramps. So Jimmy Oliver is beginning to take some snaps on the Jackson State sideline as Tennessee State. There he is. There's Oliver. He was the starter last week, although both quarterbacks saw action. You see his numbers last year against Tennessee State. Got it done on the ground with 12 rushes for 83 yards. Jimmy Oliver, a senior from Columbia, Mississippi. Passed for almost 2,000 yards last year and 14 touchdowns for Jackson State. Tennessee State second and 11 after a loss on first down. And the pass is complete. That'll be a first down to Chris Johnson. Good throw there. Comes up wincing though, Rod. Take a look there. Oh, we got a, a good throw here. I mean, you got a quarterback on the move. Um, uh, getting on the perimeter. Javaris Williams does a great job of getting out in front of this play and cutting down the outside linebacker to give the quarterback a clear lane. Steps into the throw and boom delivers it. This is this is the this is the 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 Hefner that we're used to seeing. Nine minutes, 19 seconds to go in the third quarter. We'll go right up the middle again. Keep it on the ground, straight forward, and get six on first down. Javaris Williams on the carry, and there is a Jackson State player slow to get up. And that is 97, Corey Clark, who is on the ground. We got good physical action up front here, and Corey trying to get over there and make the play, and a couple of his own guys hit him in the side. Probably got the wind knocked out. See, Big Dennis Coy, number 92, lost his helmet in the process yeah. there as 97. Corey Clark is still on his back being helped. Yep, it's getting down to it here. And that is also cramps, according to James Verrett on the sideline. So as we mentioned, Rutland and Haw experiencing cramps. And now Corey Clark, 6'3", 320 pounds, a senior from Collins, Mississippi, asked to go to the sideline and join his head coach, Rick Kamaji. And that looks painful the way he's gingerly walking off the field and also trying to hydrate there as well. 
Well, everybody out here is playing hard, and the, and the temperatures are the same for everyone. If we have one team that's having three, four, five guys out with cramps, and the other team is not, then we have a we have a, either a a conditioning problem or b a, a, a group of guys that just didn't take care of their bodies and hydrate appropriately. So Jackson State leads, but will the conditioning become a factor as we progress here into the second half? Williams on the toss, pursued by Jackson State. Six and seven guys around the ball carrier. Daniel Brooks, number two, is in there as usual, along with three or four other teammates to make the stop on Javaris Williams. You know what? And this, uh, you look at the black shirts converge on uh, on Williams over here, who's doing a good job. He breaks one tackle. He's trying to break another tackle. And you got eight guys around the ball. You've got a group of guys on defense for JSU that are playing extremely hard. You can you can always measure. The, the intensity and the effort uh, on the defensive squad by how many shirts you see around the ball. Right there is a perfect example. Uh, these guys are playing hard. They have eight shirts to the ball. Yeah, Brooks made the initial contact. Williams got away from Brooks, but Marcus Jamison, number 19, was right there to follow it up. And stop the ball carrier on third and four now with 8.15 to go here in the third quarter. Tennessee State trailing Jackson State by a count of 13 to 6. And now the reports from the sideline are that Trey Rutland, who has played this entire game for Jackson State, will go to the sideline as Tennessee State connects. <laughs> Troy Smith on the receiving end of that play from Antonio Hefner. And we do see a flag on the field. It is at the Jackson State 45. Let's take a look, Rob. Uh, well, great job uh, by Hefner getting on the perimeter and his hands hurting. So instead of trying to lay this ball to the outside arm and let him keep running to the sideline, okay, which would be a nifty throw and probably add some yards to the end of this run, he just gets it over the defender and gives his man a chance to catch a nice soft ball. A very, very good decision there. There you see Rutland going to the locker room. There was an inadvertent face mask on the play. So the ball will be spotted at the 32 of Jackson State. That play covered 33 yards on the pass to Troy Smith from Antonio Hefter. And it's first down for the Tigers. Quick pass. Good block in the perimeter. Even better play by your corner. Brandon Belvin made the catch. Correction number 81, Kwame Patrick. His first grab of the night. Patrick picks up three on the play. Good effort by the corner to get the cut block. Jumps over the top of it and makes the play. Jeremy Pierce, good job getting around that cut block. Second and seven for Tennessee State. From the Jackson State 29, Hefner keeps it. And he took a lick from Daniel Brooks. <laughs> right in his grill. <laughs> Larry Wolfberg bringing the noise. Ow. Larry, the guy's got a, a bad looking ring finger. Cut him some slack. Instead, he hit some right in the teeth. What a great shot. Bang, there's Daniel Brooks coming in from the left rod. And you. You love to see that physical play. Let's hear it. Yeah, you're right. That was Brooks. You know, we talked about him earlier, playing defensive end. It looks like they're starting to get him in the backfield. We'll have him back at linebacker. Now, Brooks makes the tackle there, but not before Tennessee State would appear to have enough for a first down. But the spot is going to be very close. And Brooks doesn't look the least bit winded or cramped or anything. That no. guy can play. Absolutely. He's a stud, man. And they do not have enough for the first down. It will be fourth and probably less than a yard to go for Tennessee State. Well, as long as you run the ball uh, away from number two, you should be okay. Incomplete. Hefner looking for Johnson. Coverage was there. Dominique Johnson on Chris Johnson. 
incomplete and a turnover on downs. Oh wow. I, you know, I, I don't I don't I don't like the call. I mean, we've got a little bit of contact. A little bit of contact here, but that ball's uncatchable either way. And I hate the fade route on fourth down. It's such a, a tough play to convert. You're having great success running the football. You pound it down here. You run a play action pass. You make the big play. Have a chance to get some points on the board, which are sorely needed. And you run a fade with a quarterback that obviously is struggling because he's got a bad finger. I don't I don't call that. Tennessee State's offensive coordinator is Fred Keis. It looks to me like Coach Webster is saying, how in the did that play get caught? Yeah, he, he didn't look like he was too sure about that yeah. play call. And that is Jimmy Oliver. He connects on his first passing attempt as Trey Rutland is headed to the locker room. He hooks up with number 18, Christopher Johnson. Thirteen yard pickup on the play rod. Yep. Play action pass. Hold the linebackers. Run three guys deep, one guy short. Well executed offense there. I'll tell you what, good physical stop by Kevin Bledsoe on that too, getting up the field there and closing that thing off. Hall on the ground. And Hall crosses the 40 yard line, taken down by Nashawn Bigham. Second and five for the Jackson State University Tigers, who hold a 13 to 6 lead with five minutes and 13 seconds to go in the third quarter. Well, if, if, you're, if you're Tennessee State University, I mean, you start blitzing now, you start taking some chances. They had a lot of success with it earlier. Now we've got a stoppage in play. And let's go down to James Verrett with a very special guest. James. Well, when you think of Tennessee State, you think of defense, and you also think of this man right here, Ed Tutal Jones, a Dallas Cowboy great. First of all, I know you may be disappointed with the score, but how do you feel about this year's event? Oh, it's been fantastic. You know, the golf tournament this morning that I held out in Tunica was very nice, great weather, and uh, it's a good game. You know, we I don't like the score right now. Our defense is playing very well. We just have to somehow generate a little more offense. Uh, they've been playing since 1949. What are your memories of the Jackson State Tennessee State rivalry? Uh, nothing but competitive rivals, you know, and, and that's what it's all about. That's why all the fans continue to come out and support the Southern Hampton Classic because they know they're going to hear the battle of the bands, going to always be great, and you're going to get a very good competitive football game. What do you think Tennessee State needs to do in order to get on top? Well, our defense got to continue to play well, but not only play well, generate some turnovers. You know, we're not moving the ball well, so they're going to have to put them in a little better offensive position by creating some turnovers. All right, thank you very much. Ed Tutal Jones, Tennessee State Tiger great, also Dallas Cowboys Super Bowl champion. Back to you guys upstairs. Thank you, James. The number one overall pick in the 1974 NFL draft by the Dallas Cowboys. He played 15 years with the boys, played the Super Bowl seven in 1978, a 27-10 victory over Denver, part of the doomsday defense in Dallas. Number 59 on the offense, penalty five yards, third down. That Super Bowl seven, or 12 rather, was played in the Superdome, which is the site of college football's national championship game this year, Rod, on January 7th. Yep. Too Back tall. to New Orleans. Yeah, too tall as a monster. A great player for a long, long time. 15 years for the Dallas Cowboys. Unbelievable. Jimmy Oliver in at quarterback for Jackson State. Trey Ruffin going to the locker room with cramps. Oliver pressured. Gets away. Throws. Incomplete. Incomplete along the sideline. His target was Rodney Gray, but Oliver just did a great job to get away, and now we see a flag on the field. To number 84, Rutt. Rough in the pass. Larry Williford, number two, had the initial pressure on Jimmy Oliver. And let's get the official word. Personal foul. Wow. 
Wow, I, I, I didn't think that was violent enough for uh, roughing the passer. I mean, he even pulled off and hit him with his chest. He didn't put his helmet in there. Oliver sandwiched between two defenders. It is a roughing the passer call. Moves the ball up to the 48 of Jackson State. First and 10 for the Tigers. Hall. And there's not much over the left side for Haw. He may have, in fact, lost the yard as we take another look, Rod. You know, this is such a critical point in the game. You hate to see a call decide things, and this goes a long way. You know what? You know what? He did, he did take an extra step and a half. I, I stand correct. Sean Richardson could have pulled off a little more than he did. Am I flip-flopping again? Is that, is that what I just did? Take a stand, man. Take a stand. <laughs> Sean Richardson. That's right. Yeah, Richardson is 6'3", 250, the senior from St. Louis. Last week had a sack and six tackles. We have not called his name too much, but last year, two and a half sacks and eight tackles for loss. First on the team in that category in 06 as a flag flies. Pass is incomplete. And the physical play continues. Dominique Rogers Cromarty. With the stick for Tennessee State, but let's check on the penalty flag. And there are two of them on the field. And it will go against the Jackson State University Tigers. Now it's Jackson State shooting themselves in the foot. An illegal formation by the offense. Only six men on the line of scrimmage at the snap. The penalty is declined. Third down. James Woody is the offensive coordinator for Jackson State under Rick Comagy. Woody worked with Comagy at Tuskegee, and that's where Rick Comagy had tremendous success. The Eddie Robinson Coach of the Year in 2001 and 2002. He was head coach at Tuskegee from 1996 to 2005. Undefeated in 2012 and 0 for the Golden Tigers of Tuskegee. Oliver, oh, shaking big at midfield and a first down inside the 40 of Tennessee State. Wow. I think somebody left the jock strap over by the 50-yard line there. Jimmy Oliver scampering 15 yards. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I need surgery on my knees. Ow, that's, <laughs> ow, that's ugly. <laughs> Nation Bigham getting, getting shook. A la Tim Hardaway, <laughs> Allen Iverson, just golly, you hate to stand in there in the film room the next day and watch that. That never happened to you, did it at Notre uh, Dame? Yeah, it happened. I can't imagine that. <laughs> Hall up the middle. Breaks through the first line of defense into the secondary, and Hall is close to the 25. They will spot him at the 26, and that is good enough for another Jackson State first down. So they had those penalties, Rod, but back-to-back, -back, solid offensive plays, and they're moving the football. You know, we talked about it in the open, the, the, the lack of mental toughness shown by uh, Tennessee State University, and that when they're, in, when they're in adverse situations, they just don't seem to pick themselves up. Guys are a little slower. Nobody really wants to make the tackle. Everybody's grabbing. Nobody's hitting. These guys have got to find a way to play disciplined, physical defense during during uh, tough situations facing adversity. 13 to 6 is our score with a minute 58 to go here in the third quarter. The Southern Heritage Classic on Sports South. Welcome back to the Liberty Bowl, the Southern Heritage Classic on Sports South. 13 to 6, Jackson State leads Tennessee State. Jackson State in the dark blue driving here on Tennessee State. First and 10 from the Tigers' 27-yard line. This is Hall. Comes to the outside and forced out of bounds after a pickup of about four yards. Eric Hall, 13 carries for 53 yards in the game so far. Remember, this is his first game of the season, essentially. Missed the opener because of the ankle injury, and he is in there and getting the job done so far for Jackson State. Yeah, if he can stay healthy, you'd expect him to gain 1,200, 1,300 yards this year. Uh, like we talked about in the open, physical, inside the tackle runner, and what he showed us tonight a little bit is some speed and ability to bounce the ball, get it on the perimeter, make little guys miss, and move the ball outside. It's something that he hasn't shown yet. Jackson State will call timeout. Jimmy Oliver comes out from under center and takes the timeout. That is the first used by Jackson State University. 
Tune in for Braves baseball on Sports South as the Braves take on the Eastern Division leading New York Mets Monday and Tuesday night. Braves Live starts things off at 6.30 Eastern, followed by the games at 7. That's Braves against the Mets Monday and Tuesday nights on Sports South. And talking about baseball, Rick Comagy also an assistant at Colgate from 1978 to 84. He was the head baseball coach for four years as well at Colgate. He's a guy who knows his sports right here. Absolutely. And then he coached at Dartmouth for a couple of years after that. He, he, real bright guy. Also coached at Central State, which is an NAIA team. In 1992, he was an assistant there, and they won a national championship. So quite a nice coaching pedigree for Rick Comagy as his Jackson State Tigers continue to move the ball down the field with a 13-6 lead over Tennessee State. Oliver has to step up, gets it away, and it's complete. No, it is not. Jamar Johnson could not hang on to it. Looked like he might have had a chance at that one, Rod. Great job by Oliver. Jimmy Oliver, the quarterback, number nine, buying time with his legs, uh, avoiding the rush, but staying in the pocket, not committing to the run right away. Committed to letting his receiver get across the formation and then deliver the football on time. You know, people forget that Jimmy Oliver may have gotten benched this game for Trey Rutland, but Jimmy Oliver is coming off a couple years ago. He was the number one rated junior college prospect in the country. He was the the, uh, the, the junior college number one ranked player, national player of the year, uh, actually two years in a row. So this guy has got a pedigree of his own. Third down for Jackson State, and that's going to be good enough for a first down. Close to it. Very close to it. Chris Johnson made the grab at the 17-yard line. This is going to be very close. If you don't get it, you go for it here. Tom? Absolutely. Great job. Look at him. Plant his back foot and deliver it. You know, golly, you didn't have to go down to your knee to make that catch. Jackson State, if they get the first down here, they were two for ten on third down coming into this play. Now, last week against Delta State, they were just one for 14 on third down. So Brilliant. any progress in that regard is positive for Jackson State. Let's take a look at the measurement. And see just how close this is. There's that Nike football we've been talking about. It's slick, man. A little slippery. You, they slick. do not have enough. The distance of the football left. A crucial point in the game right here. Mark this one down. One minute, 39 seconds. It is fourth and less than one for Jackson State. Kick Rod, what goal. do you do? Kick the field goal. Kick the field goal, make it a two score game. I mean, kicking a field goal here is almost as good as scoring a touchdown. I'd like to see him go for it. You go for it and get it. You get continue on. to use the clock, yeah. and that is your ally right now. High pressure, you, you, you're physical, you're dominating. I got all that. But and you've got Eric Hall in the backfield as yes, well. Yes, you do. Let's see what happens here if they try to draw him off I like or go point. through with the play. Fourth and less than one for Jackson State. Huge play here. On the Tennessee State 17. Jimmy Oliver, number nine, the quarterback, under center. Hall stumbles down very close. This is very, very close. I don't think he got it. I think we'll have another measurement because it is just too close to call. Hey, how's that three points looking to you right about now? <laughs> Let's just wait for the officials right, and the right. chain gang <laughs> right. to prove me right, hopefully. I got you. I like the call. Go to Hall, but it is not enough. They will not even bring out the chains. And, hey, listen, I, I, I'm not the type of guy to say I told you so. I'm, just, I'm not built that way. Rod, take a look at 93, Harold Ayodell shooting and, through. Edel gets fantastic, fantastic penetration. He sneaks underneath the guard, gets deep in the backfield, stays low. Look how I mean, he's on the ground crawling. And you have to be that low. If you're high, running backs go right through your arm tackle. When you're low, you have much more leverage. You're able to get your hand on the leg of Hall and get the, get the thing stopped. Rod, right, here's the other thing about the field goal. To prove your case, Eric Perry has already kicked two today. Yeah, he's money. 43 yards and 50 yards. His money. career long. So... This may backfire, we will see. Rick Comagy electing to go for it on fourth and short, and the Tennessee State defense comes through. 
picked up. He's going down. Anthony Atkins came in like a shot. Wow. Took out Hefner. And I'll tell you what, he had Chris Johnson in one on one coverage running a post play wide open at the top of your screen. Great play action fake. He's looking over there. He just could not, couldn't set his feet. Got a good, got a good pass rush. See, he can't set his feet. Down the field, about 30 yards on the right hand side of the field there. Chris Johnson had beat his man by 15 yards. That's number 80, Marcus Bernard, also in on the play. Hefner, complete. Johnson still on his feet and now he's taken down just shy of the 30 called to 28 27 seconds to go in the third quarter You know what there's a new school of thought going around in, in, in at least in professional football that If you catch a ball or you're running the ball and you get into a crowded situation You might have to think about getting down to the ground because a lot of folks are being taught now to strip the football out Hit guys late, get your hands on the ball, get your helmet on the ball. I mean, that that's a case in point for a fumble. You know, if, if your guy's got your leg, another guy's got your arm, go ahead and hit the ground rather than struggle because someone's going to come behind you and strip the ball out. First down, completion for Tennessee State. They swing it out wide. Brandon Belton made the catch there as we wind down the third quarter. Get ready for a physical fourth quarter between the Tigers and the Tigers. Hat on hat, collisions galore here at the Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee. It is 13 to six as we head to the fourth quarter. Strap on your chin strap, it's gonna be tough here in the fourth. The Southern Heritage Classic on Sports South is being brought to you by Allstate, proud sponsor of the Allstate Sugar Bowl and the Allstate BCS National Championship. Tyson, proud sponsor of the Southern Heritage Classic. AutoZone, get in the zone. AutoZone. FedEx, go air, go ground, go football. And by the Ford F-150. A beautiful evening in Memphis, Tennessee. Time to dance because we got 15 minutes to go in this one with Jackson State up 13 to 6 over Tennessee State University with the ball. And they go right to the ground. This is Williams. He'll have plenty for a first down on that second down play. And he's up across the 47th. As we take a look at our game summary. This 18th Southern Heritage Classic. Tennessee State and Jackson State. And you see the field goals at the bottom by Perry. Two of them, 44-yarder and a 50-yarder, his career long. And those could be the difference when we get down to the nitty-gritty in this one. That'll be a pickup of about four on first down as Tennessee State crosses into Jackson State territory. You know, and, and you think about those turnovers in the in the in the TSU miscues. Heck, one of them was going in for a touchdown. The other one's is about the 30-yard line. I mean, you, you are literally taking points off the board with those turnovers. And in a game that's only seven points, uh, has a seven-point spread. You know, every point is critical. Terrence Wright has the only touchdown of the game for Tennessee State. A five-yard touchdown run of the first quarter. The extra point attempt was no good. Oliver Rolls crosses midfield and wisely steps out of bounds after being pursued by three Jackson State defenders. Well, after the game, James has got to ask Coach Rich Kamaji, why would you not kick a field goal there and go up by 10 points, make it a two-score game? They have to kick, they have to kick a field goal and get a touchdown to beat you. But instead, now you've got TCU fired up on the move on your side of the field. Third and three with a chance to tie you up or win it with a two-point conversion. Another big play here for Tennessee State on third and short. From the 45 of Jackson State. Looks like man-to-man -man coverage. Here comes the blitz. Design quarterback run. Nothing there. It will not happen. Jackson State defense. Number 80, Marcus Bernard. Got a piece of Oliver or Hefner correction and kept him shy of the first down marker. And a player for Tennessee State 
is still on the turf. That is number 73, Avern Alexander. And he's up pretty quickly, which is a good sign. Still hobbling a bit as he will leave the playing field, which is field turf here at the Liberty Bowl. They switched from grass to field turf just two years ago. Liberty Bowl, the home of the Memphis Tigers since 1965. And that was the first year of the Liberty Bowl played here in Memphis. The Liberty Bowl originated in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Ooh. They moved it to New Jersey for one year and played it indoors in front of 6,000 people. The first bowl game ever played indoors, and that was in 1964. And they got the heck out of there and said, let's go back to Memphis. They said, let's go to Memphis. Yeah, and they've get, been here. Jersey. They've been here ever <laughs> since. South Carolina with the win over Houston last year in the Liberty Bowl. A stadium with rich in tradition and history. And that's a beautiful punt right there. Taylor Cisneros gets it down to the 10. Jackson State will take over with the lead. 13 to 6. This is the Southern Heritage Classic. Welcome back to the Southern Heritage Classic on Sports South. Jackson State with a 13 to 6 advantage over Tennessee State. And Jackson State has the football. They are in the dark blue uniforms. Tennessee State in the white and blue pants. You want to run it here? Yes, we will. Nice fake. Right up the middle. I think the whole stadium was faked out there. Jimmy Oliver taking it past the 20, and it's good enough for a first down for Jackson State University. Yep. Yeah, good call here. You know, you got a guy coming to motion, you fake the reverse, you fake the trap, and then run your quarterback right up the middle of the field. Plus, you eliminate any opportunity for Oliver to throw a pick. I mean, the last thing you want, he's played great so far. But the last thing you want to do is, is put the ball in the air and get it tipped around and picked off and give these guys another chance to beat you. This is not the place to be throwing the football. No. Unless absolutely necessary. Right up the middle, big hole. And a big game. Lavarish Giles. And that's close to another. First down on the ground for Jackson State in consecutive plays. Well, well you know what? Uh, Jackson State's trying to play a, um, uh, a smash mouth game here, and TSU has got to respond in their cover three by getting those ends in a little bit closer and making that ball have to run to the perimeter. There is a four yard gap between the tackle and the end. There's a huge hole there. Yeah, Jacksonville, uh, and, uh, Jackson State just exploits it. And you saw Giles shake off a would-be tackler in the form of Brandon Bather. As the play clock is down to two here. Will he get it off? Just barely. Oliver. And you take a look at how these teams have fared in the last four meetings. It has been very close with the exception of 03. But it has been Tennessee State University coming out on top, especially those last two rod both in overtime. You know, and, and last year to lose on a fluke play uh, where Tennessee Tennessee is um, is actually going for a field goal to tie it in overtime and has a botched extra point. Yeah, extra point. Has, has a botched right. extra point, gets up and throws it in the end zone, ends up catching it and winning the game that way. But the last three meetings have gone down to the last play of the game, indicative of the intensity in this rivalry. We could be headed that way once again. Looks like it. As Chris Johnson makes an acrobatic grab and pays the price. Correction, number 10, Keithon McLaren. Now, that's the first time we call Keithon's number because Johnson's been doing most of the work out there. Keithon McLaren, 6'2", 190, the senior from Collins, Mississippi. Yeah, but Keithon uh, was actually a, a quarterback here and in college, and in high school. His team won the 5A championship in Missouri. Uh, he came here, played a couple years of quarterback, and they finally said, hey, if we want to get on, if you want to get on the field, you know, you might as well start catching passes for us, and he's done exactly that and been very successful. Caught 15 balls last year for Jackson State University. Oliver a pump and a throw. And boy, he had his man. Jamar Johnson had a step, but the ball was not there. Well, two things. I think Oliver let his guys get a little too far down the field, number one. And number two, 
he never got set. He was so excited that, that his man was running free that he never got his back foot planted so he could step into his throw. And the clock stops. More importantly for Tennessee State on the play with 10 minutes and 35 seconds to go as they will get the ball here on the punt. This is the last time I'm going to mention it. But if you kick that field goal and you get those three points, now all you have to do is just run the darn clock out. You got a two-square win. And I won't mention it again. That's it. Bennett kicks it away. Johnson waits for it. A near block on the play. Johnson number five at the 28. To the 40. And out of bounds at the 43. And I have a strong feeling you will, you will mention that again. <laughs> Either way. Whatever the outcome may be, and there is a flag on the play as well. Holding or blocking the and back. This is a major conference here. And the referee. Golly, how bad is this if it's a spot fall? Coming back. It is coming back. But there's a personal file the other way. So let's sort this one out, see what happens here. The personal file, could that have been for maybe a hit, a late hit out of bounds sure. on the play there? Because Johnson, Chris Johnson tried to take it out of bounds before absorbing some punishment. Let's see what we get. During the return, block in the back, number 74 on the receiver team. So Rick Kamachi haulers out to the field. Here's the late hit on the play right there. When we come back, it'll be Jackson State and Tennessee State in the Classic. I'm Mr. Back at the Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee, Jackson State with a 13 to 6 lead. Tennessee State has the ball on its own 37 yard line. After Keats, broke off, and he has a man. That's Evans. Broken up. Willie Williams got over there to prevent a big gain on that play, potentially. I'll tell you what, Williams was beat by 15 yards on this play. And golly, Antonio Hefner just doesn't have quite enough on this ball because this is this is six points all the way. Oh, stubbed his foot, can't get it set, and just underthrows it. I mean, just just underthrows it. And it was a near interception by Williams. Evans does a good job to break it up right here, or that could have gone the other way for Jackson State. Did you expect Tennessee State to come out trying to throw it deep? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you wouldn't suspect that play action fake would work, but mission accomplished. Got a guy open deep. Hefner for Johnson. And that is ruled complete. He picks up seven on the second down play. We'll bring up third and three. Chris Johnson, his fifth catch of the game. He's got 48 yards receiving for Tennessee State University. It looks like Tennessee State is going to a an old uh, Bills with uh, Jim Kelly and, and Thurman, this kind of semi um, two minute drill type of offense. After again the throw. Complete to Johnson. Got away from camp. And he's down to the 22. Well, what are you going to do? You're going to get your all conference Chris Johnson. Your best wide out, your only returning starter. Guy caught four balls last year, and you're sure as heck are not gonna throw it at Camargue, the All-American, so you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna pick on Camp, the other corner. He's gonna see a lot of action down the stretch of this game. 31-yard pickup for Tennessee State. As Johnson just stepped in front of his defender and hauled it in. Now they go to the ground. Right up the middle is Terrence Wright. 
He is the owner of the only touchdown of the evening for Tennessee State. A five-yard touchdown run in the first quarter. Yep. Well, for Jackson State, number five, the right cornerback or left cornerback here, uh, Keith Camp, uh, out of Ohio, former 400-meter dash champion in Ohio, is going to really have to tighten up his his straps here and get ready to play because they're going to come to him. You know, he's, he's the weaker of the two corners. Uh, he's made some great plays today, and he's certainly going to be tested. Um, Antonio Hefner is going to be looking to get the ball over there. Rick Conley wants the ball over there. I mean, this, this is where it's going. Can't made an interception of the end zone to prevent a Tennessee State score in the first half. Hefner slings it incomplete to Johnson, and he is all over the field. That should be good enough for a first down for the Tigers. Now, how slick is Johnson here, the wide receiver? He's a senior, he's got experience. Uh, actually, he's a junior. He gets up the field, he pushes the cornerback off, and then he curls it underneath. But not just curling, you see him coming back to the football. See that? See that hot step back to the ball? It gives him a lane, it gives the quarterback a lane to get the ball to him. And not only that, keeps that ball from getting tipped in the air, getting picked off, and eliminates the flat defender underneath. 11 yards on the catch from Johnson. First and 10 from the 11. Hefner right pitch forward and it is a touchdown. Terrence Wright ambles into the end zone and Tennessee State scores the TD. Second touchdown run of the game for Terrence Wright. James Webster's got a great feel for offense. He does. What a what a great play call. You run the shovel pass against what you anticipate being blitz. It's a fantastic play. Just like the screen plays good versus blitz. And so is the shovel pass. Let those blitzers come on up the field, dump that shovel in behind them, bam. First down, big play. Touchdown, Jackson State. 11-yard touchdown run for Terrence Wright. His second of the game. Yeah, Coach Webster's fired up as well he should be. We have a celebration penalty. Going against Terrence Wright. Antonio Hefner. Now, I'm not sure what he did wrong there. I mean, he didn't take his helmet off. I didn't see any excessive celebration. Yeah. But it must have happened. Somebody caught it. During the course of the drive, Antonio Hefner improved his numbers to 15 of 25 for 186 yards. And the extra point is good. And we're being told that Terrence Wright spiked the football. And that's what cost him on the penalty. But we are all tied up. 13 all, 11 yards for Terrence Wright, his second run to the house tonight in the Southern Heritage Classic. There you go, baby. Mom, thank you for serving Tyson Crispy Chicken Strips. They're made with Tyson quality chicken, which is just what I want before a big game. Too bad he won't play a single minute. Get the thanks you deserve, but Tyson can make your job a little easier. Great tasting Tyson crispy chicken strips, zero grams trans fat, no preservatives. A wholesome meal for the whole family. All finished. Okay, okay. You do the same, son. See you soon. With best in class towing and best in class payload. Ball steps up. I can't believe I have. Bold moves. They happen every day. I'll keep on shining. I'll keep on shining for you. There are more than 15,000 car accidents every day. That's why Allstate offers rewards for driving safely all the time. With Allstate Safe Driving Bonus, every six months of safe driving gets you cash off your renewal bill. It's time to make your world a better place to drive. Let's Allstate stand. Are you in good hands? Back to the Southern Heritage Classic on Sports South. We are knotted up at 13, and it is time to take a look at the Allstate Good Hands Play of the Game. 
Well, you got a great play by uh, by the quarterback here, uh, Antonio Hefner. You know he's got the bad digit on his throwing hand. He's in a lot of pain. He's making great decisions on the stretch. And what hands to take that snap off the turf? Not only not only catch the thing, but stand up in the face of a blitzer and get it delivered to the tailback for the touchdown. He had about a half a second between the time he actually got that, his hands on that ball to when he got hit in the, in the chest by a middle linebacker and still had the wherewithal to, to deliver it on time to the back and score the touchdown. Great play. Eric Benson will kick it away. Number 83 you just saw in your picture is Jamar Johnson for Jackson State. But this kick is really, really short. That's a live ball. Sure is. And Johnson came all the way up from his position to actually field it at the 27. But there was a Tennessee State player in the vicinity. That is a live ball on the kickoff, which has been moved back five yards this year in college football. Mm -hmm. Which is going to allow a lot. It's going to it's going to allow teams to to uh, to be freed up to attack people. But, but look at this ball and hits the ground. Hey, grab the ball, there, partner. That's a live ball. Everybody's a little too casual about this ball down the field. You got to realize that if this thing is past, five, past 10 yards, it's a live ball. That was Cromarty, Rogers Cromarty. It was right under it. It just hopped over him like yeah. a bad hop at shortstop or something. But how aware is he to get down, to hustle down there and try to get down there to get his hands on it? First and 10 for Jackson State. Trey Rutland back in the game. He just throws it into the bench area. Smart play. So Rutland evidently has recovered from a bout against the cramps earlier. He had to leave the game, as did Eric Haw, both with cramping. Yeah, there's nothing there. They they ran a hitching corner in a, a cover three a zone defense at Tennessee State. And they matched up perfectly to it. There's nothing there. And you say cover three, Rod. That's three defensive backs covering three separate zones in the defensive backfield, correct? Yep, that's, that's three guys, one guy per deep third of the field, and then you have two guys in the flat and two guys in the hook, yep, right behind the, uh, the line of scrimmage. And now a flag comes out, and looks like this will go against Jackson State University. And they need some kind of, they need some kind of spark here. Whether it's Trey Rutland or Coach Kamaji coming up with a plan of attack with 758 to go here in the fourth quarter. Well, you're gonna have to get the ball in Christopher Johnson's hand, number 18, your Z wide receiver for Jackson State. I mean he, he's your playmaker in the pass game. You can find a way to get him out there in one-on-one -on -one coverage and feed him the pill. You got a chance to score a point. Rutland has the only touchdown of the game for Jackson State, a two-yard run back in the first half. He escapes the pressure and gets rid of it. And gets knocked to the turf. Nation Bigham. Yep, running back to pass. And Good defensive pressure there. Maurice Davis, number 59. Yep, Maurice did a great job of taking a good angle. You know, he, you always teach guys that, that to get to the upfield and outside show. And that, that make that quarterback have to stop his feet and cut back inside you. Don't let him run around you to the outside. Great job on that pass rush. Davis picked a good time to make a great play, and it's now third and 15 for Jackson State with five wide receivers. Rutland over the middle of the field incomplete looking for Johnson who also took a pop from Larry Williford Correction Rodney Gray was over the middle Incomplete either way and Jackson State forced to punt away. Hey Rodney Gray look partner hey, This is big time football if you want to be part of this class if you got to hang on to these balls And you got to understand that you're gonna take a shot now Larry Williford does a great job of coming across here and and reminding him that uh, you come back, you're going to hit you every time we see you across here. <laughs> but you, but you got to make that grab. You're, you're going to take the shot anyway, correct? Johnson. Back to the 37. Tries to swing it wide. And can't get away from number 44, Christopher Manigan. Nice play on special teams for Jackson State. Yep.
College football continues here on Sports South next Saturday, 7 o'clock. We'll kick it off between Georgia Southern from the Southern Conference and Coastal Carolina from the Big South. And I think a lot of people have now heard of the Southern Conference thanks to our friends at Appalachian State with that monster upset that people are still talking about a week later. Yeah, it's and a, they'll talk about for many years to come. It's a testament of what good coaches can do and players that trust their leadership. Uh, who, who exceptional teamwork can do with that state. It's just tremendous. And again, Coach Webster trying to sync up with the band. Look, we don't want you to play, but well, we've got the ball. Yeah, I mean, and they're playing right in their own quarterback's ear. You can't hear a thing over there. I, I got a feeling we might see Webster taking on the band director here any minute now. There's going to be a fifth fight over there on the sideline. I, and, 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 I, and I don't know who's leading the band. All right, for Tennessee State, but I'm going with Webster. That's yeah. just, I, I don't know, sight unseen. And to take nothing away from the ability of the bands as we saw on yeah, display no, at halftime, they are absolutely tremendous. Oh, they're fantastic. The band Tennessee State trying to pull off a comeback victory, and it is incomplete. Broken up by Dominique Johnson for Jackson State University. Who was their best defensive back. You know, he actually started four games uh, for Mizzou before he transferred in here. Dominic Johnson's a player. He's only a junior. He'll be back for another year. Look at that. Great break on the ball. Doesn't interfere. Nobody, just all hands. Look at next for Chris year. Johnson. Next year he'll intercept that ball. Next year he'll get his hands out and catch that thing. Antonio Hefter on the previous drive. Four or five, 61 yards. Yeah. Tennessee State. Got the equalizing touchdown on the run by Terrence White, and that is incomplete. Yeah. Well, Antonio Hefner is showing why James Webster, the head coach at TCU, at TSU, has so much faith in him. I mean, the, the kid is just a gamer. He's playing in pain. He's been beat up on, been sacked, throwing some interceptions. Game's coming down the wire. He's still making plays. I mean, that ball's got to be caught, too. And, and you look at the location of this ball. On the sideline, on high and outside. He could have got his feet in bounds. Brandon Belvin was the intended receiver. Keith Camp. I didn't know if Belvin was playing cornerback and thought he was going to knock that ball down or if he was actually trying to catch that thing. Tennessee State on third down here. Ashes fourth down now. They are now 3 of 12 on third down in the game. Brutal. They are forced to punt it away. Jamar Johnson stands at his 20. Johnson across the 30, across the 40, up to the 42. Great field position for Tennessee State University with six and a half minutes to go in the Southern Heritage Classic, the 18th Southern Heritage Classic from the Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee. Nice job by your turn here. Catching the ball on the fly, moving moving up the field, and Jamar Johnson gets north and south and gains positive yards. And now this is when Coach Webster wants the band to play as loud as humanly possible. Absolutely. Here's the situation right here. Jackson State with the ball. Of course, they also have a band. And they're cranking it up too. It's time again. <laughs> Rutland the handoff to Hall. Side steps one man across midfield. And inside the 45. That's a 15 yard pickup for Hall. And a first down for the Tigers. Good run by Eric Hall here. And, and what he's doing that he hasn't shown either uh, this, on film that we saw in last year is the ability to bounce the ball outside. He always knew he's going to be physical. He's, he's going to finish his runs with its pads down and attacking. Boom. Just bringing the heat in there. We knew he could do that. But what we didn't know is his ability to, to bounce it outside, get it on the perimeter, and move the chains. Hall left the game in the third quarter with cramps. He is back in and making a difference here on this drive for Jackson State. He gets his number called again. Comes to the near side. Shoves one man down and crosses the 30. A 13-yard pickup. And another first down for Jackson State. And out of nowhere, the rains have started to fall here at the Liberty Bowl. They held off all day. We saw huge dark clouds, and out of nowhere, I'm telling you, it's a downpour. 
Uh, yeah, we go back to Eric Hogg and look at this play is meant to go up inside. He bounces it left, 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 breaks a tackle, gains 10 yards. And then ends the ends the play by giving a defensive back a shot in the chest with an elbow. I mean, a, a good physical, tough runner. And if he continues to get the ball in the perimeter with the success he's having now, he's looking up. He's looking for a huge season this year. The rain has subsided somewhat. Giles to the ten, down to the seven. Okay. Lars Giles. All right. Now uh, uh, enough about giving credit. To Jackson State. We gotta take a look at what's happening on the other side of the ball. Tennessee State has had problems with, with their mental intensity. They seem to mentally wear down during games. You're watching guys with the blue pants on walking back to the huddle, hands on the knees, not making tackles. I mean, look, look at this drive. The running backs have broken four tackles on this one drive. There were there were guys in college that could go a whole season and miss five tackles. We got four missed tackles on one drive. I mean, are, are they getting tired? Are they breaking down? Uh, Whatever is going on at, at Tennessee State, they've got to get this thing figured out. They do not play disciplined football in pressure situations. And we see some evidence of that as a Tennessee State University player is down as you get a look at head coach James Webster for Tennessee State. And he is excited about something. Everybody in the stadium should be excited because with five minutes and 35 seconds to go, we are tied at 13. This game has a history of being oh so close, and we're headed in that direction once again here in 2007. That is uh, Marques Hall, number 21, being helped off the field. back to the film here and you see the ball run on the perimeter and and, and and there's nobody there to tackle Giles. I mean Giles is quick obviously he's a hundred meter dash champion in the conference but there's no reason that there shouldn't be anybody with the white shirt on the same page that he's on. I mean he was in touch for for 14 yards. You know what and, and this is part of competition you play so hard that you feel like you're going to throw up like you can't breathe I might pass out you've got to work through that. You've got to work through that if you're ever going to have any success in this game. You've got to find a way to fight through that deal. First and goal for Jackson State. Lost the ball. Stopped immediately. Ramon Willis, number nine. Came up to make the play on Hall, who prior to that run had 16 carries for 81 yards. He gets nothing on that play. After that injury, they restarted the clock. You got the ball down inside the 10 yard line. What's your hurry? Why, I mean, why, why even run this play with 20 seconds left in the clock? Let it run down. You know, you're going to get at least three out of this thing, right? You still want that field goal back, don't you? Absolutely. <laughs> You'd feel a lot better with yeah, the points. game would be over almost. Play clock down to five. They get it away. Rutland dragged down. Brandon Blackman, number 15, making the play for Tennessee State. Clock continues to tick. Four minutes, 30 seconds to go. Yep, outside linebacker Raymond Wills makes the makes the play before that. I mean, the both these outside linebackers are showing showing some toughness here and trying to make plays to get their team off the field. But I'm still seeing a lot of hands-on hips down there. A lot of guys looking awful tired. Third and goal from the five for the Tigers of Jackson State University, who lost the heartbreaker last year on this very field to Tennessee State. Look at that, hands on hips. Yeah, in the Southern Heritage Classic, 31 to 30, and lost the previous year as well in overtime. So we'll take a break here on third and goal for Jackson State. We're tied up at 13 in the Southern Heritage Classic. I'm Charles Ewing. President and CEO of Ewing Moving Service. Since 1980, we've grown to be one of the largest minority relocation companies in the Mid-South. We specialize in corporate and residential moves, and now as a certified agent of Stevens Worldwide Van Lines, Ewing handles local, national, and international moves. Our professional customer service agents, packers, and movers will take care of you. 
We also have 274,000 square feet of climate control storage. So the next time you're moving, call Ewing Moving Service. Sports South follows App State on a date with destiny. We don't ever stop out here. For two and a half hours, you don't stop. From the practice field all the way to Ann Arbor. We will not be there. Sports South brings you unprecedented access of what some consider the biggest upset in college football history. This is going to go for another touchdown, black and gold. We're going for the field goal, and it is through the sides. I'm still dreaming. We just beat Michigan in the big house. You're watching Sports South. Tied up here on Sports South, 13 all, and Jackson State has done it on the ground on this drive. Well, we talked about uh, Tennessee State having a difficult time mustering up the, the willpower to stop the running game down the stretch, and they're getting a big, fat dose of it because Eric Hall and Giles are running the ball with authority. Jackson State has decided, hey, listen, we're going to finish this game out in a physical manner and attack Tennessee State University, and that's exactly what's happening. Third and goal from the five. Can Jackson State finish off the drive? Rutland to the corner of the end zone, and that's too far. Incomplete, looking for Johnson. So that brings up fourth down. Now hold on for a second. Tell me why you would put the ball in the air when you have it on the five yard line. You know you're going to get three and throw the ball to Dominique Cromartie, who is the first team All American corner. He's going to be playing in the pros next year. And you're throwing the ball his direction on a trick play. Please explain that to me. Well, how would you do that? At least the right thing was done by Rutland. If you're going to miss, miss out of bounds. Well, they're lucky. They're it's a little too close for your comfort, though, it sounds like. They're lucky Dominique didn't snatch that ball out of the air and go score on him. Now, if you're going to challenge one of the corners, you sure don't want to challenge him. Get the ball over to Marcus Hall or somebody, but you don't want to throw it to the first team All American, do you? Well, they got away with it, and we'll have an upcoming field goal chance as Harold Aodell walks off the field, grasping his right knee. All right, we've got a little trick play, a guy going to motion. We're going to throw the extended fade route. How long is that ball in the air? Jeez Louise, I, I don't understand it. I mean, that's, that's a long pass to throw. I mean, if you want to throw a slant, you know, a, 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 a back shoulder fade, something like that to the short side of the field, sure. But that ball's in, all, in the air a long time. Eric Perry from 22 yards away. No good. Perry from 22, no good. And the way it looks, Tennessee State got a piece of this one. Don't tell me that was number 45, Dominique Cromartie. There he is. The All-American the all, all corner. Yeah, Perry Come, had connected coming off the edge. From 43 and 50 yards, but right there. Oh, is that guy stuck? It is Rogers Cromartie who gets a hand on it. Yeah, he'll, he'll be playing on Sundays. He's, you know, you know what? The more I watch this thing, he might be the best football player on the field, bar none. He, I mean, he might be that guy. We haven't talked much about him, and I'll tell you why, because they're not throwing to him, which is pretty smart. The senior from Bradenton, Florida. And here he comes off the corner to Look. get a piece. Golly, that's hard to do. I'm telling you, it's a long run. You've got to have great explosion, and, and he has that. He's the SWAC indoor 60-meter dash champion, which shows he's got tremendous explosion. So Tennessee State takes over. Three minutes, 45 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. What kind of risks do you take in this situ situation? Are you willing to go to overtime? 
Well, you don't have a choice now because you didn't kick the three points earlier. I mean, you kicked that three. Well, I'm not going to go there. But I'll, <laughs> but I'll tell you this. You know, at this point in the game, you, you've got a way between trying to move the football uh, and, getting, and getting it turned over on your side of the field and kind of running out of the clock. So it's, it's a tough call, especially it's second and 13. How many plays do you have in your playbook for second and 13? Hefner falls down at the 25. I'll tell you what, that was a good one. Quarterback sweep. He stays on his feet. He probably gets the first down there. And he definitely stumbled as we take another look, Rod. Yeah, I think he got tackled by the 25-yard line. Not the 20-yard line. Oh, he bumped his foot into yeah. his own guy. Stepped on a teammate there. You know, it's funny. People always say, ah, oh, I can't believe his teammate got in his way. He tripped over his own teammate. Hey, listen, you got the ball in your hands. Avoid the guy. I mean, he's just like a defender. It's not his fault. Don't step on his foot. So call it third and six for Tennessee State. The play clock down to two. one. And they just got it away. And that will be a first down complete. Hefner hits Johnson. And he took a stick after the ball left his hand. Yeah, he's limping. They brought the corner off the edge. And... But at this point, he has to heed the words of his head coach. You have to be a warrior at this point. Less than three minutes to go and tied at 13 here at the Southern Heritage Classic. Yeah, and, you know, Antonio Hefner is a gamer. He really is. I mean, no wonder James Webster speaks about him with such praise because he stands in there. He takes punishment. He is the leader of this ball club, but he's showing you everything he's got right now. Keith Camp hit Hefner with all he had. And that's Williams who spins off to the left for a short game. I'd like to see a little urgency here. Let's go, folks. we got two minutes to go in the game. Let's get back to the line and call another snap. Let's go. A little casual for my taste. Minute 50 to go. Tennessee State with the ball. All tied at 13 here in the fourth quarter. Hefner keeps it. Dumps it off. That is Brandon Jackson who makes the catch. Shy of the first down. It will be third and about two and a half. Maybe even more than that. So it's one third initial situation here on third down. And the clock continues to tick. I mean, do you let the clock run down all the way thinking you may not get it and you don't want to leave them a whole lot of time or do you start running, start running play? Well, Tennessee State's history in overtime the past two years, it's worked out for them. Pretty though. good, hasn't it? Yeah. Maybe that's not the worst place you could go yeah. with a minute and a second to go on regulation and now we have a stoppage in play. So we're all the way down to a minute and I don't think Tennessee State really knows what it wants to do because Rod you present quite an argument what do you do you know what I, you know I don't understand why if you're gonna call a timeout why you want to waste this time if you feel comfortable you're gonna get a, a third and three which really is an, in the offense's favor you should convert that you need as much time as you can now obviously you look at the at the graphic there and you see that overtime has treated Tennessee State awful well the last couple of years in this thing but you know, I don't like the idea of the clock winding down, uh, you know, with the game on the line. You need as much time as you can. Javaris Williams, the running back for Tennessee State, scored three touchdowns in the game against Jackson State last year and had the TD in overtime. It was Brandon Williams who caught the two-point conversion pass to win it for Tennessee State in dramatic fashion. Now you take a look at, uh, at Hefner right there, the quarterback, 16, he is just a warrior. I really like this kid. He's, he's playing as hard as he can, and he's banged up with his hand, and he's, he's showing you everything he's got. And the ball is loose. Evans picks it up. They won't get the first down, but more importantly, they do not turn it over. Hefter tried to give it to Evans, and the ball was on the turf. And Lair, Coach Webster not happy about that. Let's take a look at the replay and see what happens. Just a straight drop. Yeah, Hefter never had possession of it, and Evans makes the heads-up play to get on that ball. Watch that, Rod. You know what? They've, they've run this play twice now, and do you realize that both times they've run it, they've had a fumble? So what's got to happen is on the sidelines, the coach has got to say, hey, listen, number 12, you got to back up and give him a quarterback some room. He can't simultaneously catch the ball and hand it off. And, and, and I think what happened there is, is uh, Hefner, the quarterback, was so 
was so worried about getting the ball handed off one time, he didn't catch the thing. That that play, you should rip that up in your playbook and throw it over the back of the Liberty Bowl because that's that's awful. The timeout situation. Tennessee State with one remaining. Coach James Webster, his team with a scoring drive here in the fourth quarter to tie the game at 13. Punting situation. It's a low, ugly punt. Too many men on the field. There's a penalty on Jackson. There's a flag. Johnson has the ball across the 40, up across midfield. Tiptoes the sideline into Tennessee State territory. We got, Rod Smith has informed me. We got a first down going the other way. This is coming back. And it was fourth and four. So, wow. If it goes against Jackson State, Tennessee State could conceivably have the ball back and a fresh set of downs with 34 seconds to go. It feels like Jackson State wanted to go for the block on that punt return there, but then changed their mind late in the game and they tried to change personnel and they got caught with too many guys in the field. Rick Kamaji is an interested spectator on the sideline, as is head coach James Webster as the rain comes down once again. The funny thing is it's going in the opposite direction this time. And it will go against Jackson State. Brutal. Wow, that's pre-snap, so that's a first down for uh, well, let's see what, Tennessee let's, State, isn't it? Yeah, let's see how they assess this. Now, if, it, if it's on the return, you would think Jackson State would maintain possession. Exactly. That? Wow. Now, I don't know. I mean, Jackson State would have gotten the ball back, but there are 34 seconds left. And my gut feeling is that Coach Webster will just sit on the football. I mean, it's starting to rain. You're at your own 45, and there's 34 seconds to go. And you've won the last two games of the Southern Heritage Classic in overtime. And you can catch it right here. Yeah, the, the, the Jackson State the, players see, and they're going for a block, and then somebody discovered, oh my gosh, I'm on the block team. I'm, I'm on the regular return team. Wow. Hefner over the middle. Great play, complete. Antonio Graham, the fullback of the tight end correction. Antonio Graham. Antonio Graham that caught what like three or four balls last year and they run a play action pass uh, right at him a fake right at him slip the tight end down the middle versus cover two he's wide open not only that a great throw uh, by half the quarterback and, and a great catch just a wonderful a wonderful play there 30 yard pickup Antonio Graham had one catch coming into tonight's game Hefner will spike the ball and stop the clock. 18 seconds to go. And now the rain continues to come down, and that is becoming a factor as well. What a great play here. Antonio Hefner just making it happen. Lays it up there. And you see how, how catchable that ball was? He does that quite often. He throws the ball up there. He throws it to entry to Graham here. That's just super catchable. Right in stride. He really didn't even have to leave his feet to catch it. He couldn't just reach up and caught it. So what you're, what you're telling me is that is that Tennessee State has turned the ball over two more times. They've got extra points blocked. The quarterback's got a bad leg. They throw an interception, and they're still going to win this thing? They may win it. We will see, though. Hefner to the sideline. Out of bounds at the 20. We saw the cutaway shot of Eric Benson. He is the kicker for Tennessee State. This season, he is one of one, a 29-yard field goal kick last week in a loss to Alabama A&M. But last year, 10 of 14 on field goals, his longest 41, he had two blocks. Yeah, that, that could looks, have been a hole. That looks like a big-time hole, and he had him hooked. Matter of fact, he almost grabbed him by the back of his jersey and rolled him to the ground. Right. At this point in the game, Coach Webster at Tennessee University is not going to put the ball in anybody else's hands but his quarterback, Antonio Hafner. If anybody else touches this ball, I'll be shocked. 11 seconds to go. Williams. 
Brought down after about two yards, and they call an immediate timeout. Four seconds remaining. So the ball is in the middle of the field. Eric Benson's your kicker. So the rain is the worst it's been all night. <laughs> Not the most opportune time for Tennessee State. And here comes Eric Benson, 5'10", a junior from Roulette, Texas. And he's got the hopes of the Tigers on his shoulders. A 35-yard attempt. Well, if you're Jackson State, you're going to get a timeout and freeze him here, right? Or the timeout freeze him. Timeout. No timeouts left for Jackson State. Ah. Here goes Benson. The kick is away. And it is good. Tennessee State has won the ball game on the final play of the game. 35 yards for Eric Benson. And the Tigers have won the Southern Heritage Classic for 2007. Jackson State Rod absolutely snake bit for the third year in a row Tennessee State has pulled this one out the last two years in overtime and this one on the final play of the game Eric Benson between the uprights and James Webster can celebrate the victory Fittingly enough with Antonio Hefter his quarterback and there is Benson number 19 the winning kick in the Southern Heritage Classic. Yeah, it was a, a great game. We expected it to go down to the last play of the game. Well, this is the, the third year in a row now, or the fourth year in a row that that's happened. A uh, great robbery, and Antonio Hefner, I think, is, is your most valuable player. He was just absolutely outstanding. He had a rough start, a battle back, didn't quit, continued to try to make something happen, do some great passes despite his sore, his sore hand, uh, ran the ball effectively, didn't turn it over in the second half. He got better as the game went on, not worse. And he deserves a lot of credit for that, considering how much how much physical discomfort he's in. And, and I still, I, I'm, I'm just taken aback by, by, by Coach Comgie's decision to not kick that field goal late in the game. And here is our FedEx player of the game. It is the quarterback from Tennessee State University, Antonio Hefter, 232 yards through the air, a touchdown, and a huge victory here at the Liberty Bowl for Tennessee State University. The final score, 16-13. The Tigers and head coach James Webster win it on the final play of the game. Well, the battery's good. <laughs> Tennessee State has won it over Jackson State. 16 to 13. James Verrett is down on the sidelines with the victorious coach from TSU, James Webster. James. Coach Webster, you said it would be like gladiators in ancient Rome in the end. Your team had the strike to knock out the Tigers of Jackson State. Your team showed mental it's in the half. Well, we showed something this game we didn't show in the last game. And like you said, that was mental toughness. We talked about it. We challenged our players and had to. We felt like we were in better shape than it. And, and, and always, we knew we'd come down the last play. If it came down that, we really felt confident we would win. Perform. He's a winning quarterback. That's what I can say about him. He's a winning quarterback, and that's great. All right. Thanks a lot. Back upstairs to Roman and Soggy Liberty Bowl. Thank you. Thank you, James. The rain started coming down here in the fourth quarter, but it did not stop Tennessee State University. A connection between Antonio Hefter and Antonio Graham for 30 yards sets up the field goal, Rod. Yeah, just an, an outstanding play by, by a quarterback that uh, as you watch this game, you can not help but be compelled to believe that this kid's going to get nothing but better in the type of person that you'd want. Uh, to lead your football organization. Coach, Coach Webster said, hey, he doesn't speak very much. He's very, very quiet, but what he does do is lead by example. He works as hard as anybody in the organization. He's never he's never late for any meetings. He's a, he's a, a leader for these guys, and, and I'm really happy for him. Eric Benson wins it with a 35-yard field goal. Our final score of the Southern Heritage Classic, Tennessee State University 16, Jackson State 13. Join us for more college football next Saturday night as Georgia Southern takes on Coastal Carolina. 
For my broadcast partners, Rod Smith and James Verrett, I'm Tom Wormy. So long from the Liberty Bowl.